What up, everybody? Welcome to Flager 2. It's your boy Schultz. I'm here with Akash Singh, Mark Gagnon. Alex Media is still not here. He is on punishment, okay? Mm. Alex has kind of been fucking up the audio and video lately, and uh, we said, yo, you got to get that shit together. So we're going to, you know, you take a month off. Everybody got to be accountable for what they do on this podcast, yep. okay? It's very important to all of us. It's how we take care of our families. It's what we're doing for our future. It's what we're doing for right now. And um, it didn't feel like the, the quality of the podcast was a priority. So we had to let him know how serious we were about that. So Alex is taking a month off from the podcast. He will be back after that. He is still our brother. We love him very much. But at the same time, we put a lot into this podcast yeah and we need to make sure that that energy is matched by everybody and the importance of this being executed to the best of our ability is matched by everybody on this podcast yeah. okay but he will be back in a month and uh if we continue to have uh audio video problems after that he'll be gone for a lot longer <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that is our brother we love him and he'll be back now i guess it'll be like three more weeks yeah something yeah like that perfect uh we also got the truffle in the building okay and uh, guys let's start the show yes don't worry comedy community we will talk about michael che and tim dylan going at it on instagram and twitter <laughs> but before we do that uh, I have to bring to everybody's attention that uh, Mark laughs at disabled children. That's, and, okay. uh, That's not true. That is, That's that is true. true. That's that is true. true. Well, I don't know if you laugh no, at it, but I, you did share it. I, yeah, I did. And maybe you're sharing it for good fortune. Maybe you're sharing to lift everybody's spirits. But what I defy the audience to do right now and everybody in this room is to watch this video and I want you to try to not laugh or even smile. I shared this because it was a heartwarming story. And it's, I and I knew that you were having a hard time with this movie, and I thought, yes. you know what, Andrew actually might prefer to see something that I'm would trying lift to help spirits. you out, dude. And I did feel better afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I felt amazing. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right now, what we're about to watch is the uh, the All Blacks. These are the whoa 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 whoa, 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 whoa All whoa, Blacks. Whoa. Yes, this is Charlemagne's network okay. for <laughs> podcasting, isn't it? Charlemagne's network for podcast. What is it so. called? It? Yeah. Oh, that's Black Effect. All Blacks yeah. are a rugby team. This is the All Black yeah. Effect. Uh, yeah. the, the All Black Effect, right. It's a rugby team uh, from a place that has no black people. Yeah. yeah. So, New Zealand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the No Blacks. Yeah. The No Blacks <laughs> went to Scotland. Am I right? No, Ireland. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry, guys. They all look alike. And I'm not talking about okay. the kids right. in the video. All right. I'm just going to Or the All Blacks. <laughs> or the All Blacks. But um, All okay. Blacks do not look alike. Basically, what happens is... Uh, the team is there, and then there's a younger disabled kids team. What do they have? They're cousins, they, right? They have Down syndrome. They have Down syndrome. They've been diagnosed so with Down syndrome. The Cuzzy Wuzzies okay. <laughs> are lined up, and they're going to do a haka. What a haka is, it's like this like pre war dance that the teams sometimes do. Yeah. I remember they tried to do it. New Zealand was playing the United States in basketball, and they tried to do it to like intimidate them. They like <laughs> slap their chest, and they like stick their tongue out, and they grab it. They go, ha ha. And it looks really cool uh, if they're not playing basketball yeah, yeah if you're not playing an actual team of all blacks yes then exactly. it's fine <laughs> when, yeah. you, when they played the real blacks yeah they were like <laughs> this was a real racist yeah. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 so uh what happened is they go and uh the the cuzzy wuzzies wanted to impress them right it was probably not the cuzzy wuzzies it was the cuzzy wuzzies trainer and their trainer decided you say teacher bro yeah, you say trainer like they're pokemon bro yes, they, what's wrong with you my, I, don't, I don't know what you guys See, I, feel do. Like you're I don't think I they're fighting this. them are they fighting them no, that would be next no. level they're not in up. trainers yo no but they're tra it, they're also in a rugby team Okay, I think. Uh, How different is is their game of soccer or rugby or football? Okay. It's whatever game they want it to be, yeah, really. Just put whatever ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is an so, uplifting story. I thought I thought this would actually bring They joy. basically learned a haka yeah. so they could impress the All Blacks because they look up to the All Blacks. They think the All Blacks are absolutely amazing. Yeah. And they're finally in their hometown. They thought that would never happen. So their teacher, their trainer... Their coach. It's a heartwarming story, yeah. It's a heartwarming story. Their coach, they put a haka together. Hit it. Hit the video. This music, dog. <laughs> Don't smile. <laughs> the music doesn't help. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Go back to when my, my man just lets loose, bro. <laughs> Yo. 
Okay. Nice. Last time. Last time. Is, time. One more beautiful. time. I'm doing it one more time, dude. One more time. I'm smiling at how beautiful it is. I don't it know what is. you're laughing at. I'm smiling at. That's what I'm laughing at. I'm laughing at that okay. exact thing when he just lets it rip. But here's the thing it's not that different from a haka, which makes me think that. Oh. Were the All Blacks. <laughs> Originally, were they originally cousins, and that's why they were so much stronger than all the other rugby teams? <laughs> right, right, right. Right, because at the end of the day, it's about strength, and everybody would talk about, "Oh my God, the All Blacks are unstoppable. They're so strong." I mean, if you even watched Moana, The Rock's character, no neck, yeah, yeah right, yeah, like, yeah. right, yeah. 100%. Samoans might be cousins. I think that's what I'm trying to say. I, don't I think know. that's I what like I'm trying to say. I feel like you're being uh, unfair to them and also the Samoans. Go. I don't, have you ever done a haka? I don't know, but why are you dressed like them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, Mark plays for the team. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, no, tell me. Tell me more about Miles Mike. said he looked like Kermit went to prison and got tats. <laughs> Who said that? You? Miles said that. <laughs> okay, but go. Talk to me more but about have you when... never Have you ever done a haka? I haven't, no. Never? Have you done a haka? Yeah. When? Why? <laughs> When I was playing, we were, we playing, were playing soccer for the in team. Orlando. Yeah. yeah, no, but oh, seriously, you did a haka no, before in your life? No, never of course not. I just don't but understand. I think it's hard to do. I think I feel, like, I feel like it's difficult. It to don't do. look that hard, to be honest with you. I yeah. don't look. It's just a, slapping your thighs yeah. and then you just fucking scream at somebody. <laughs> yeah, that's great, dude. I'm all about it. That's Mike Malak right there. <laughs> that guy right there with his tongue out, mouth open, just screaming. You're telling me that wouldn't be a little intimidating? <laughs> what is more scary? Kyle Rittenhouse walks into your parade or <laughs> yeah, your march, yeah, right? Yeah. Or to defend my small business, to obviously. To defend your small business. Obviously. Yeah, he's right in front of the 7 Eleven, just <laughs> yeah. waiting for someone to Yo, break in. Yeah, probably shit. love that motherfucker, Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> like, Finally, someone, someone with some sense. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of the community. Protect everybody, right? They don't give a fuck. Yeah. They don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? But Kyle Rittenhouse, way more dangerous. Obviously, he has the Air 15. Yeah. Right, right? But if instead you just had the team of cousins oh, yo. doing a haka in front of your business. Yo, I'm intimidated. You're intimidated. I'm intimidated. These guys, yo, these guys are going to win whatever they do, bro. Just you fucking primal scream. That's bro. all I'm saying. I think that we should have a rent a cuzzy business where <laughs> you, you should be able to, when there is like a, a protest or a march or something where you think destruction is going to happen, you think they would have stormed the Capitol if those kids were waiting right in Son, front of it? That's yeah. your body. We're going to take back our country. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that would have happened? There's no way, right? They're like, all right, let's go back another yeah, day. Yeah, the seventh. Well, let's well, try January seventh. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yo, that hey, that should be your bodyguard. Yes. Keep it in the family. Get you some cousins. I love that. I love that man. Okay, enough about the cousins. Let's have a conversation. Everybody in the comedy community talking. Uh, we have Michael Che, Tim Dillon beefing a little bit online over an SNL sketch. Uh, Michael Che is a comedian, hilarious comedian. Uh, he's got a Netflix special. is is really brilliant. You should go check him out. And he's also the um, he's the head writer or co head writer of SNL. Uh, and then Tim Dillon, hilarious comedian. He's got an amazing podcast. Uh, you should go check Tim's stuff out. I mean, I'm sure you guys know Tim, and uh, just brilliant appearances on Rogan and other pods, etc. And they're beefing over this SNL sketch. The SNL sketch. Uh, it was a Sesame Street spoof, but it was about Ted Cruz. So it was mm -hmm. Cruz Street. Right. And uh, part of that is uh, Pete Davidson playing Joe Rogan. And uh, he comes out, and this is this is over this whole beef about uh, Big Bird coming out on Twitter and saying that Big Bird got vaccinated, and Ted Cruz was very critical of that. It's like, why are you trying to convince kids that they should get vaccinated? As right. if kids watch fucking Sesame Street anymore. I don't think yeah. kids have watched Sesame Street in 30 years. But I think we were the last generation. No, I made Sesame a comeback. Street. Did it really? Yeah, yeah. My friend's kid loves Elmo. Oh, really? Yes, I think it's all branded around Elmo, but mm -hmm. it's, it's big again, believe it or not. Fair enough. So there's this whole sketch. Now, a small part of the sketch is the Joe Rogan part. Yeah. Right? And basically, Joe Rogan comes out, and he's like, what I do is I take uh, horse pills. Yeah. I take uh, horse drugs. And then... Big Bird's like, well, I'm not a horse. You think I should take that? And he's like, well, I'm a human. I still take horse pills and blah, yeah. blah, blah. And um, basically what Tim Dillon said is there are a hundred different ways to do the sketch and have it be funny. The show is just lazy, mediocre hacks. Yes. Now, I'm assuming if you're one of the writers of the sketch, that makes you feel away. Yep. And then he, he keeps going. Oh, oh that, Tim The show is going. now just lazy, mediocre hacks is the roughest one, I think. But then he tweets more. He says, people saying SNL hasn't been funny since the 70s are wrong. Farley, Rock, Sandler's, Myers, Norm, Sherry O'Terry, and Molly Shannon were brilliant. Tracy Morgan. Also, the Hater McKinnon era was funny. It's maybe the singular... 
Greatest U.S. comedy platform, but this sketch was bad. And not bad because it made fun of Joe or Ivermectin, but it did it in the laziest way possible. It was talking points and not jokes. Comedy shows can have a point of view. Mine does. But it should also occasionally have comedy. So he, like, it was a tweet series. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, it was an attack on, on SNL or very harsh criticism of SNL. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So I, I can understand, you know, if you're Che and, like, that's your show and this is the show that you've been running for the last few years, specifically the section that Tim is being critical of. Yeah. He's basically saying, yo, it was good before you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now with you, the shit sucks. That's a good-ass point. That's right? a good-ass so point, So I yeah. can understand how you might feel way about yeah. that. So then Che comes out and he goes, LOL, you got to be kidding me. Tim Dillon, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point, question mark. What's the world coming to? Then he has two more tweets. One just goes, Tim Dillon in all caps yeah. with a question exclamation. And then one in bigger font just says, Tim fucking Dillon? Yeah. And then uh, he says, look, I don't want no trouble. And then this is the screenshot right here on so, the far right. So, yeah, somebody was responding to uh, somebody was responding to Che and basically saying, hey, Tim Dillon makes one hundred ninety uh, K a month on Patreon. And Che goes, I don't care if it's a zillion, which is not true. If he was making a zillion, we would all care. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a, zillion? Uh, a zillion dollars. <laughs> you don't care if it's a zillion. You don't care if there's a person making a zillion dollars. <laughs> If they were literally making one zillion dollars on yeah. Patreon, you wouldn't care at all. You'd still be making Big Bird sketches if you knew you could make a zillion dollars <laughs> on fucking Patreon. That's that's not true. That's not true. But uh, uh, he goes, he goes, he goes, Che goes, I know Tim Dillon, and he ain't what you think he is. He's a sweet, humble guy who really tried at stand-up, got nowhere, became a media personality because it's much easier, and we're all very happy for him, but don't get fresh, Tim. Whoa. Whoa. Now. Then uh, there's a response. Somebody DMs him and says, he's selling out theaters on tour right now. I'm a fan of both yours, mind you. It's him and Sam Talent doing a theater tour. He just sold out the Beacon. And Che said, and we're all very proud of him. And you know I don't want no trouble. But in the words of Prodigy, and then he does a, uh, a Prodigy, some lyric from a song that I honestly don't remember because I couldn't screenshot that. Um, but then Tim responds to, on Twitter to that. He says, here's the reality. I sell more tickets than Michael Che ever has. And I built something on my own that he could never do. Che has done well for a drunk who can barely read, but his show sucks and he knows it. And then Che says, all fair points. And I'm very proud of him. I don't want no trouble, which I thought is a funny back and forth on both your ends. Yes. Uh, yes. And then he said, seriously, folks, what's the world coming to? Che did. And then he said, there's so many white guys of a certain size in my DMs right now. Right. And they both just yeah. go on to kind of like backtrack a little bit. Yeah. Uh, okay. What are you guys thoughts? I, can't y'all both just be funny? I like, I don't know. I, che, you're you're on top, dude. You don't got to worry about if somebody been not beneath you, but like you've been a guy at SNL for eight years. If a yeah. guy that is popping off now and got hot in the last couple years is taking shots at a show you work on, yeah, I can see how you get defensive, but also you that show doesn't let you do you, right? You're not gonna get to do the same shit on your Netflix special. That, that drops on Tuesday as you would on the sketch. The Netflix special is you. Right. This is what NBC will let you put out. Right, right, right. Yeah, I I, I think this, this is Che promoting a special. I, you know what? There's, That's there's a good no point. chance that he gives a fuck. He don't, yeah. he don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Che promoting the special. The special also comes out when? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. We're today, today when this podcast this comes drops. Out. Yeah. yeah, of course. So yeah. Yeah, you're going to engage in a beef. You don't have a podcast. You're not necessarily going out and doing podcasts and all these other platforms. You still have to drum up interest for your special. Right, right, right. right. It's not like throwing a billboard up in fucking Times Square does anything anymore. Yeah, yeah. You got to drum up interest. It's pretty convenient that a day before the special comes out or two days before the special comes out, there's a beef with one of the biggest uh, comedic media personalities. Yeah. And he gave you the alley-oop. Right. I'm not texted Dylan. I was like, yo, you gave him every opportunity. Yeah. Because everybody's going to go to his Instagram to look at what the beef is about. And I promise you, there's probably just one picture saying my special comes out the 16th. Yeah. Like, I, I bet. I, no, I, didn't, I didn't see what his thing looked like. I guarantee. That is exactly what it is. Okay, of course. <laughs> Jay's smart. Yeah. This guy is smart. Yeah, he's really He didn't really accidentally smart. become the fucking co-head writer of yeah. uh, SNL. Yeah. You do that because you're smart. So... Shit. I mean, if he was, yeah. that's literally all it is. It's one box. This is hilarious. <laughs> and that's the name of the special. Shame, shame the devil. Love it. 
Uh, this is genius. This is like rap tactics. You got the album coming out. Start the beef. Yeah. What would what would Kanye do? What would Fifty Cent do? Yeah. Right. What would Eminem do? Yeah. This is classic rap tactics brought into the comedy world. Start the conversation. Now motherfuckers gonna hate watch the special. Yep. All the Tim's fans are gonna come out here like, man, I'm I'm gonna show you who's not funny. I'm gonna show you yep. who's a what, what do you call him a failed comic or something like that. Yeah. Mm. And then all those people count his streams. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. YouTube took away the dislike button. <laughs> yeah, they can't true. even dislike his shit if if he puts out the trailer on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like uh, this is this is not the first time that a comic, uh, probably even Tim, has criticized SNL. It happens all every yeah. week. Comics say the fucking show sucks. Yeah, every week. Yeah, it's almost like it's become exhausting for comics to shit on it. Yeah, like I'm getting exhausted by it, mm -hmm. and I think the reason is is because like. A lot of comics hold it in such high regard. Yeah. So like by being maybe rejected or not included in something that they hold, you know, as such an important institution in comedy hurts a lot. So when you see it starting to struggle and kind of not doing that well, like the numbers aren't what they used to be. Mm -hmm. And just that's nature of like a changing uh, sense of uh, to humor. To your point, I'm, I'm pretty sure Che's not going to be... I think this is this his last season on SNL. Who I don't knows? think he's gonna be there that much longer. So Who fucking knows? he's got his own show on HBO. I can't imagine you can juggle them both. Jay's been leaving SNL for the last five years. <laughs> Every time I talk to him, I'm like, "Is it over yet?" And now he, he goes, got yeah, his yeah, HBO yeah, show yeah. though, so Say he could again? pour himself into that. Right. So right. I think this might be his actual. I assume he's leaving by next year. So. But based who cares on what? if it's just I think now you got your HBO show, now you got your Netflix special. Yeah. I don't know how much long you keep doing all three. Right. You're gonna focus on the you shit. So to that point, you wouldn't really based care on, if somebody shit on, on the show you're leaving. A hunch. And Akash is right with his hunches. Son, my hunches are the nicest, bro. Guy, guy I'd be having hunches. hunches. But who fucking knows? You're saying there's other opportunities for And why, I'm saying why would he be that protective of a show that he's probably leaving? Like, you got two other... Nobody shitting on the Michael Chase You're show. always going to be protective over the things that you make. Everybody's susceptible to criticism. If somebody shits over something that's yours, you're going to... I'm trying to agree with that. you. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. <laughs> fuck. You know, let me no, agree no, with no, you. No, no, no. Yeah. No, no, no. What I'm saying is... You're, I don't... I'm, I understand what you're saying. I'm not saying he's necessarily right. going to leave. I don't right. think that he'll leave. But that's just my personal opinion. I, as much as I try to tell him to leave. Yeah. I don't think it will happen. Right. Um, Mark, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, same exact thing. I think they both benefit in the beef because, like, Tim's yeah. fans will be like, yo, we went up against, you know, the head writer of SNL, like, the old institution, and, like, we won. Yeah. So, like, we're the best. Like, it validates their, you know, 100%. fan base. And then Che is going to get all the streams, and he's probably going to get some residual fans that are like, oh, it actually was not bad. Like, I actually enjoyed che it. Che needs people to see how funny he is. Because that's the thing. He's funny. You're yeah. going to watch the special, and even if you don't like what he had to say about you Tim. You got to respect. Yeah. You're going to go, no, nah, no, nah, he's good. That's my point. Yeah. Even if you're hate watching, you're yeah. going to go like, oh, it's pretty good. And yeah. there's going to be a percentage of those he fans. He knows he got the good, so he can have the beef. Yeah. I do think that it was unfair of him to say. I think there's a couple things that are going on that are unfair. Um, I think it's unfair of him to say, and it's almost like a it's almost like a cardinal sin like to say you're saying to another comic that they failed yeah. now so now tim is also saying that the show is hack that's huge if he didn't use the word that he said the show is just un unfunny hacks now exactly so he said the writers are hacks so yeah. he said you're a hack so like they both kind of cross the line now this is comedy culture there's certain things you're kind of not allowed to say to one another like you're busting balls at the table you don't talk really about someone's act if somebody gets into like their act and someone being hacky or someone doing that, yeah. that's where shit is actually important. You're talking about somebody's jeans, somebody's fucking hair, someone's jacket, whatever. Yeah. We're having fun. But once you start going into that one thing that we're all very sensitive and care about, now you're giving license for you to go the fuck in. Right. It's real then. Exactly. Yeah. Yo, separate note. I got to say thank you to the city of Chicago for showing up. Uh, for us last weekend that was fucking unbelievable yeah we did, uh, I bet yeah man we were, we were at the chicago theater that's incredible and um that's the biggest venue i've ever done really 3500 people i think and we did that shit twice Woo. and it was just so unreal like the love was crazy in the city the love was crazy chicago has always held me down and like um I don't know, man. I just, I just really appreciate it. It was, it, it meant a lot, man. That's an iconic venue. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, and shouts to Mateo for coming out, man. Mateo, Mateo came out and fucking murdered it. Killed it. He killed that shit. He was doing, uh, 
he was singing Mariah Carey's uh, <laughs> All I Want for Christmas, man. Yeah. And uh, that was just so much fun. It was yeah. just great. And Ben Askren great. came through. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Askren, man. Oh, Askren came yeah, through. yeah. So that motherfucker grabbed me. Like, he was fucking around, but he <laughs> grabbed me, like, grabbed my arm and, like, locked his, like, fingers around it. Yeah, yeah. You got scared for I a while. I got strong. Yeah. I didn't think he was going to do anything. But, like, I wouldn't have a choice if he was. <laughs> That's know? my Bitcoin brother. That's right. Yeah. yeah he's, he's telling me, he's like, man, I'm going to get you into that shit 100%. I'm like, this motherfucker, Akash, already got me in. <laughs> so we had a little combo about that. But it was just a cool weekend, man. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. And, um, yo, this weekend, we're going to be in Minneapolis and in Fargo. Minneapolis, both shows sold out. If you bought tickets to the Minneapolis show before the pandemic, one of them is a pre-pandemic show. So I know some of y'all listening right now, y'all probably maybe even forgot that you bought those tickets. Well, those are the ones. We're honoring that show date. So make sure you go check that shit out. If you got homies that got it, check that shit out. Uh, we'll be there Saturday for two shows. Fargo, then we're going to be up in that. Uh, I'm excited to go to Fargo, man. I'm, 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 I know a lot of people don't say that, but I am. <laughs> and uh yeah so go get that shit go get tickets if if you don't sell out the show in fargo uh and by you i mean me um i'll never go to fargo again but i will be so insulted because i know there's nothing else going on that's a good point you're just making a choice to be bored over me yeah sit at home and do nothing or come to me so that would break my fucking heart if you did that fargo i'll see you there if you're in either of the dakotas you drive your ass i don't care how far it is okay how often are we in the dakotas make it happen um and then after that we're going to be uh laughing spree fest in december we're down there in boca raton florida jacksonville as well that weekend the 5th of december boston for new year's eve and then we've added a bunch more shows portland seattle Oxnard, Sacramento, Brea, California, Coachella, California, San Jose, Toronto was crazy. We did the Toronto shows, man. The first show sold out in like fucking seven minutes. I think the second show is pretty much sold out as well. This shit is absolutely That's nuts. Incredible. Toronto, thank y'all so much. New Orleans, Pittsburgh is available as well. We let we lit up Pittsburgh, so you can go check that out. We're coming to the Berg. New York City, we added a second show, Radio City. Go get them tickets. And then Atlantic City is the last date uh, in America for the infamous tour. I said in America for the infamous tour, and that's all I'll say about that. Akash, what you got? Yo, first of all, thank you to everybody who came out in Fairfield. I was surprised that many people came to the fucking show in Fairfield. It was good. Also, shouts to Lisa Lampanelli. She yeah. came and hung out backstage. They were like, hey, Lisa Lampanelli wants to come hang out. Are you cool with that? And I was like... Yeah, of course. What's yeah. the bitch doing here? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. she was cool as fuck. Thank you, legend. That was dope. She watched the whole set. She's very complimentary. Thank you so much. Uh, this, these two days after Thanksgiving, the 26th and 27th, Friday and Saturday, I'm gonna be at Zany's in Nashville. Let's come through. Let's fucking party. We'll go to Prince's afterward. December 9th through 11th, I'm at the Comedy Loft in D.C. Next year, January 7th and 8th, I'm coming home to Dallas in Hyenas. You better sell out these fucking shows. Uh, January 27th through 29th, I'm at the Comedy Vault in Batavia, Illinois. Like Andrew said about Fargo, I guarantee you there's nothing else in Batavia. Take your ass there. And this, February 3rd and 4th, I'm going to be in Richmond, Virginia at Sandman Comedy Club. Get your tickets at akashsing.com. Let's get back to the show. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because uh, I want to make sure that you are satisfying the woman you love. Okay, and ladies, I want to make sure you're getting satisfied. And the way we're going to do that is by making sure that your man and fellas, making sure you got the hardest dick on the planet and there's one way to do it, and that's blue chew. Okay, you deserve to drop dick off in the most effective and brilliant way possible. And the chew has got your back. I'm telling you, okay, you chew it up. You are chewing it out and she will speak about you in a completely different way for the rest of your life and hers. Blow backs out with the blue. Okay. Bluechew.com. You're going to get it for free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping when you use the promo code flagrant. Bluechew.com. Okay, use the promo code flagrant. You get it for free. Just pay the five dollars shipping. Best dick of your life. Enjoy. Now let's get back to the show. It's a tricky thing. Now, the the section of the sketch. This is what's interesting. The sketch itself. If you watch the whole sketch, I actually didn't think it was bad. Yep. Like there's a part with Bert and Ernie funny. That, that is actually very funny. Like I, I'm looking at the writing and I'm going into it defensive of Joe. You know yeah. what I mean? You know Joe's my guy. So if anybody's being critical of Joe, I'm like, man, fuck you, right? Yeah. The guy did so much for me, so obviously. But I watched the whole thing, and I was like, okay, there's a couple funny moments. The Joe thing sucks. Sucks. Mm -hmm. There's no joke. It's the really joke bad. is I take horse medicine, which we already disproved. 
Yeah. It's like that would have worked the week it came out. Even maybe. The shit, he's eat, the shit he's eating, just make it elk. Like make it a little bit funnier of right. a hacky joke. But 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 you see what I'm saying about yeah. specifically like it's just dated. Like, yeah. bro, I don't know if Chase this much of a mastermind, but part of me thought like he did that shit on purpose. Here's what's uh, interesting. Write a <laughs> shitty Joe sketch, right? You're going to have all the people who fuck with and defend Joe Shit on that. The whole internet is going to start talking. They don't have Trump to criticize anymore, right? So you can't go after Trump. You need the new version of that. You need the new divisive guy. The new divisive guy now, CNN is trying to do it, is Joe. Joe. You make the show about Joe, and then you make it, if he's a true mastermind, <laughs> Right. you make it criticizable. Yeah, unfair. You make it yeah. unfair. If it's a super funny, pointed like parody, then everyone goes, oh yeah, that was funny. If it's hilarious, yeah. you gotta give it up. It doesn't make any news. If it's not, if it's straight, kind of hacky. Right. Like, trust me, if Chase on stage, that's not the joke he's making about horse dealer. Yeah, no way. I, And maybe I say it's because I think he's truly a great comedic mind. Yeah. I know for a fact that's not the joke. Yeah. There's no you fucking know, to way. To your point, yeah. SNL, that's the 47 seconds they put online on Twitter. Tim Dillon oh. is yeah. responding to a tweet that SNL put out. Oh. So that's where I'm like, because I was like, before you said that, I was like, why would SNL put that out? That's the 47 seconds you wanted out? Maybe you're right. Maybe it is. This will get everybody talking about us. It puts us back in the spotlight as SNL. You always need people talking about you. And then if you're Che, yep. you're like, yeah, cool. When comics go at it, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm going to use that. Yeah. And I get to promote my shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is if he's a mastermind. Now, look, best case scenario is, or like most uh, genius chess move is doing it and leaking it on purpose or specifically choosing it on purpose. Yeah. Worst case is they just need people to talk about the show. And if you talk about the motherfucking man who's in charge right now, yeah, Joe, there's going to have a conversation. We're having a conversation about it right now. Yeah. yeah. We talking about that shit. Now, um, we were talking a little about this yesterday. You had an interesting point about like, both of their potential sensitivities. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought you speak on it a little bit more. I thought it was interesting. So I guess the point that I was trying to extrapolate is like Tim is so much made outside of the industry yes. and his whole audience is just basically like almost grassroots yeah. and it exists behind Patreon and it's like all his thing. He has full ownership. Whereas Jay was like brought into this pre-existing institution in the system and he's just a part of it. Yes. And so a lot of his fans, I think, initially probably came from SNL that were fans of SNL and then became fans of him. Right. So he has to like sort of moderate public perception a lot more because he's been grandfathered into this pre-existing system. Whereas yes. Tim is sort of outside of that criticism of from like critics and like reviewers and articles and shit like that because he already has such like a prominent yes. like diehard fan base. So basically, in, in other words, like Che can get fired. Right. And his fans came to him through the show and the institution. Right. So they're not going to stop watching the institution. Right. They're not going to stop being SNL fans. Mm -hmm. Right. Matter of fact, if you, if Che don't give them anything new, they might stop being Che fans. So mm -hmm. Che is locked to the institution. And right. he's got his fans that he got outside of that. And some will rock with him. Sure, if he leaves but or much fired. less than the, the, the mountain of fans that are watching SNL. And we are critical right. of SNL's numbers, but it's still a very big popular yeah, show. Yeah, There's no question. Yeah. Right. So, so I understand why he has to, and I think this is what Mark's saying, why he has to respond to public criticism more because public criticism is what could get him fired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, him and Shane are in very different situations, but public criticism is the reason why Shane's not on the show. Yeah. yeah. Public criticism is probably the reason why everybody who's been fired off the show is fired off the show. Yeah. A few sketches come out, people are like, yeah, that person's not that funny. And then Lauren's like, I guess that person ain't that fucking funny. Yeah. yeah. Adios, see you later. So you got to manage public perception. Someone's right. coming at you. You got to make them radioactive or cut their legs out. Yeah. That person has a criticism that people seem to agree with. Mm -hmm. You got to be like, but why is this person able to critique? Yeah. You're going right. to listen to this guy? Yeah. Yeah. You got to assassinate the character. It's yeah. like a me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah. mean? Like if, right. if this girl's saying you did some shit, you got to go Portnoy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Buy the champagne bottles, engrave them. You got to go at the funny. <laughs> you got to go at it. Yeah. Yeah. You got to go at the validity. Yep. Right? Yeah. So so I understand, and I thought that was really I thought it was really a poignant observation. And, uh, and whereas Tim, on the other end, it is used to criticism of him, but doesn't have to care as much as long as that criticism isn't coming from his fans. Yeah, as yeah. long as his fans are appeased, he can't get fired. Yeah, I didn't know that Miles uh, had the little headphones in, and it sounded like he had his hand over his ears, and he's bending down, and I was like, 
Am, am I so boring that <laughs> you have a headache? Like that's. <laughs> yeah, you got the, migraine. Like dude. literally, he was bent over like this. Like I cannot listen to another fucking word of this guy speak. And then I, and then he took his hands off. And then thank God there were like little AirPods oh, in. Yeah. Okay, Miles, you almost really made me feel horrible no. right there. I felt like Michael Che responded to it. <laughs> Tim Dillon tweets here. But um, Miles isn't funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. So you 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 understand why. Why Che is reacting oftentimes to these critics, mm. et cetera. Now, I assume that he's doing that for game. Yeah. I assume he knows he could rile up the internet, and when it's time to rile up the internet about something mm -hmm. that he has coming out, maybe it's his show, yeah. maybe it's a special, maybe it's some project, maybe it's a tour that he's doing, something, I think he knows how to engage and do that. Right. And I think that's a sophisticated chess move from a guy who doesn't have a mouthpiece to really promote his stuff. He right. also has the shield of the institution. So like people can criticize SNL and he can either just not take the bait be like, yeah, that's SNL. I wasn't involved, whatever. Mm -hmm. Or if they do criticize SNL, all of a sudden he can make it personal and be like, no, that's my thing that you're coming at. Yes. Cause Tim never said anything about Che. But if you're saying that the show is, is hack stuff and he's right. the head writer, it's going to reflect ultimately on him. But he can choose to not opt in. Like, if you're coming at him going like, yo, Michael Che is the worst, whatever, yeah. then you kind of have to respond. If somebody shits on Flagrant 2, I want to respond. Right. Yeah, but right? you're much more intimate. This is Andrew Schultz's Flagrant 2. It's not Michael <laughs> Che's SNL. But if he's the responsible party for the writing on the show, if he's the one that greenlights all the things, it's I like don't know a the whole sub. process. It's like responding to a sub as a rapper. You don't have to respond to a sub. He didn't say Michael Che's an unfunny hack. Son, but if, it, but if, sorry to cut you, but if somebody shits on Rockefeller Records, Jay Z got to feel a way about Jay Z. That. Made yeah, Jay Z is the owner. He's him and Dame founded that. That's shit. a good point. He, he created it. It's right. like Mem Bleak being Mem Bleak being like, "Yo, how fucking dare you come at Rock?" And they're probably criticizing Mem in particular. But point is, it's I like, see what you're saying. There's a little bit more distance, but you're still gonna personalize something that he can you, personalize it that you are 100 percent tied to. For example, yeah. if the biggest thing you're known for is this institution mm -hmm. and you take responsibility for what's happening in the institution, even if the, if the institution supersedes you, that's the biggest thing you're known. If someone shits on India, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's do you know what I'm saying? Thing. Like yeah. if someone shits on my favorite basketball team, I'm defensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like we get defensive over right. the things that we relate but to. But I haven't been spending five years saying I'm going to leave India. <laughs> this is my last year on India. Right. right. You know what I mean, <laughs> right. I think it's probably marketing. And I, to, well, we say this all the time. If somebody takes a little shot, it's like, yo, that guy's not even worth it. Don't respond. We say yeah. that to each other. This yeah. guy's not worth it. That's not worth it. Why would you get into that? Yeah. But it is worth it. If you got some shit to promote, it's very worth it. Yeah. It's very worth it. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I bring it's, that up just to say he's positioned in a cool way where he can either choose to opt in or choose to not engage. Yeah. And he took this time to engage. You know what's funny is it, is the way that he did it. Now, I, I know Ch Che's plugged in. He's a comic, so he has to know what's happening in the world, and he has to know the shifting of the guard and how like yeah. you know traditional TV shows aren't really doing what they used to do. They're not doing that for people's careers, et cetera. And um, I thought it was a little wild to say the shit about the... And again, you know, Tim's opened it up with the hacks, but I thought it was a little wild to say he's a failed comic because like... What are, how do you judge the, the success of a comic? Yeah. Right? Like, well, for, I, sorry. <laughs> He's going at, so uh, Dylan went at Che's material. At the end of the day, that's something Che wrote, head writer, went at his material. Che's going at Dylan's material right back at him, saying, don't get fresh, Tim. You're not a comic like I'm a comic. That's right. not to say he's not going at his audiences. What makes someone a successful that's comic? What I'm saying. It's also unfair to it's say that. It's Che saying you're not tickets. a good writer, basically. Well, say that. Because the. What makes somebody a successful comic, right? Like there are people that we might not appreciate their comedy. I agree. Was the the the, the Muppet guy? Done him. Done him. Yeah. Jeff Dunham. But fire. The guy is doing arenas. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if Dice was like the most clever writer or something. Exactly. But he fucking did MSG. MSG. Like legendary right. Comic. So it's like there are different versions of stand up. We all have the types of stand up that we like, right? Yeah. And I'm, I yeah, I'm like a, an extremist. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean when it comes to that shit. Yeah. I'm, I'm Malcolm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I know there's I'm Martin when it comes to certain things, but I'm Malcolm when it comes to this stand up shit. Yeah. Right. So it's like I'm not very uh, open minded about the stand up that I don't love. Right. 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 But that doesn't mean that there aren't these motherfuckers that are out here doing huge tours, killing it. Yeah. Those people are successful as a comic. Yeah. At the end of the day, and this is the tough thing I think for a lot of industry folks, and I think this is something that Tim Tim like tapped in on that did is probably painful i don't know i can't decide how someone feels if they're they're upset but like when tim was talking about selling tickets yeah and selling more tickets and it's just like there's one metric that you can really tell if people fuck with you or not 
And that's if they leave their house to see you. Yeah. The industry can inflate people and make us think that they're superstars and shit like that. They can inflate the bank account. It can, can inflate the bank. Lot. Oh, absolutely. But in terms of stand-up comedy, doing comedy in front of people, that is the game. You yeah. do a special one every few years. The game is going out in front of people. Do people leave their house, get a babysitter, get a fucking Uber, put on a nice outfit, buy some drinks, food to come see you? That is a that is to me the one true metric if you are succeeding in that craft. And it can drive you crazy as a comedy purist or even a music purist in the music industry to see guys who you don't find as pure selling wild tickets can more I, than you. Can I be honest with you? Huh. My understanding is Lil Nas X can't sell 4,000 tickets in a market. <laughs> huh. Lil Nas X is one of the biggest music stars on the planet. Yeah. My understanding from Music Insider, I'll keep that quiet, is he can't do 4,000 tickets. Now, that <sighs> is as industry as you can get, right? Yeah. Like Lil Nas X is part of the fabric. He's part of the industry, industry pushing him, getting radio play, all this kind of stuff, and dope stuff, and yeah. brilliant at working Instagram and TikTok and brilliant at marketing. Like the songs are fire too. I fucks with it. But if you're not moving more than 4,000 tickets, how much do people really fuck with you? Yeah. But that's tricky when it comes to comedy, though. Go. You know what I mean? Because, like, for example, Patrice O'Neill yep. was, like, legendary comic, your favorite, yep. but wasn't Not doing, very successful. What, like, he was pretty successful, but, Not like, very successful. Right. He wasn't doing, like, theaters. Chris Rock said that shit right to his face on, uh, on uh, Opie was, and Anthony. Yeah, that was a fucking... This is one of the most legendary... Go look at this up right yeah, now on YouTube if you can. <laughs> and it was real talk, and nobody... I imagine nobody talked to... To, to Patrice like this yeah. Mm -hmm. But Chris literally told him He's like bro Nobody, you, nobody here is funnier than you We're, They're all sitting down I think it was like Norton This is yeah This is Opie a painful and Anthony, listen dude. And then Chris Rock And Chris Rock was I guess Doing the Open Anthony show Maybe to promote some dates Or something like that And he goes Nobody here is funnier than you But Are your shows sold out this weekend? How many shows are you doing this week? What like, shows are you doing? What, what club are you at? How many people are in the yeah. club? Like he started bringing up numbers Like Who's coming out to see? You? Nobody here is funny. So you can keep doing all this shit about like how real you want to do. You don't want to do the industry, all that kind of stuff. And I think Chris Rock said something. He goes, I just don't want to do morning radio. Yeah. <laughs> like that's how successful I want to be. Like I don't even want to be here. Yeah. But he like laid it down right in front of him. Yeah. And this was at a time like Patrice would thrive in a time like right now. Yeah. Because he would have podcasts. I mean, he did have one earlier, but it wasn't part of the culture. But yeah. like he would thrive where you could just give him to the people and like takes every single day and he would fucking kill. But at that time, you had to play the game. Yeah. Because that was the only way to get in front of people. And Chris to told him, we, when I had Everybody Hates Chris, I wanted you to play Young Chris's Dad. Oh, yeah. I wanted you, but I, he, you weren't as professional as Terry Crews. Mm -hmm. I knew Terry would be more willing to listen, easier to work he with. He didn't know the lines. And you didn't know the lines. He, he tells him, like, I wanted to give yours. it to you. And you fucked it up. And I looked at this guy who wasn't as funny, but was more professional, and that's who I went with. It's a fucking. This is my go. Painful listen. Right. This is my go. But I can recognize that there's a difference in success. Right, but that doesn't necessarily take away from his ability as a comic. That's true, but some people hate his comedy, mm -hmm. right? Because comedy is obviously going to be subjective, right? And it's so, tough for Patrice to hate on another comic who's out selling him because that comic could just go, where are you at this weekend? Comics? Mm -hmm. 270? Cool, I'm going to be at Gramercy, or I'm going to be at fucking The Beacon, or Radio City. Well, I'll see you there. Right. You want a ticket to get backstage? I'll let you go. It makes sense. I mean, it's a trump card, certainly, but like, I don't know if that's necessarily the only metric you can look at. No, no, though. There's not one metric that you can look at in terms of success. Not at Not all. everybody wants to be that successful. Like, success is also something that has to do with your own career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, maybe success for you is just not having a day job. Right. And that's just what you work for and like being able to do spots at the cellar in New York comedy. There's club. a lot of comics that that's all they want. That's do. all they want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's that's great because that's success for them. I'm talking about success in the grand scheme of things in terms of like who are like the top 20 touring comedians. And yeah. at the end of the day, whether you like it or not, like if we're just going to be honest as comics, like we all know who's on that list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. 100%. And we all want to be on that. Nobody gets in this game going, I never want to do a theater. Yeah. I never want to do Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. I ne no, no comic has ever fucking said that yeah. in history. They might do it and go, it's not as fun as the clubs, but you want to know that you walked away from it. Yeah. Not that you could never do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those are different things. And you can take, you can, again, you can take shots at guys who are selling crazy tickets and be like, ah, he does this, that's not that great. But on a binary, funny, not funny, if you're selling out theaters, I got to give you funny. I cannot say you're a failed comedian. And I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, I think that's true. I'm going to keep it with a buck. If you're doing theaters for a while, that's where you got to give it up. Everybody gets one run. Mm. There are comics that might get one run. 
and then people go see it and then the jig is up. Yeah. It was almost like they paid for a meet and greet. Yeah. But you a motherfucker like Jim Gaffigan, Brian Regan. Fucking legends. Dude. These guys have been doing theaters for decades. That means the people come out and they're like, this was a sensational performance. Yeah. I'm going to keep coming out. Yeah. Like, bro, the reason why I want our show to be the most incredible experience that people have had is because that's the longevity. Like these people, there's comics that like they get famous and they just want to catch a lick and they do one round of touring and the next, the next round ain't like that. Mm -hmm. We've been very lucky that like every time we go back on tour, it's been a double up. Mm -hmm. That goes back from like me performing for 15 fucking people in in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And the next time comes, okay, there's 50. And Mm -hmm. I come back there, okay, we got 150. The yeah. next time, oh shit, we're doing a, a theater here. It's got to keep on building. Yeah. Because if it's not keep on building, that's what's happening. Right. That is that that is showing, hey, maybe the comedy isn't there. Yeah. But in terms of people leaving their house to go see you, yeah, I think that's a metric of success. Yeah. I think it's a metric of success. Yeah. And also... I mean, you can you can say you don't care about the Patreon number, but if you making 188,000 whatever it is, 190,000, that's a lot of fucking people that are saying, "I want to pay to hear this guy." Yeah. So I guess you can say he's not a failed stand up comic. But- I know, I guess you say he's not if he's a fail. But when you add that with I'm selling out theaters and the fucking line that's kind of rough is I've sold more tickets than you ever have. I am selling right now more tickets than you ever have. It's like, "Yeah, man, I can't I I, I can't really knock it anymore." I yeah. can think I'm a funnier comic than you. you might I mean, be, if, but. if that's the case, then it's undeniable. More yeah. people want to see. If that's the case, I don't know if that's the case, but if that is the case, more people want to go see Tim Dillon do stand up than Michael Che. I don't know if that's true. I don't know who sells more tickets, right. Michael Che Correct. or Tim Dillon. True. Uh, all I know is that uh, we sell more tickets than both of those losers. You guys <laughs> both lack success. And, and when uh, we say we, we mean Andrew. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what we mean. Yeah. But we speak in we's over here. Yeah. Okay? Step it up, both I'll of I'll be you. at Zany's after Thanksgiving. You, know, you guys want to come, come through. <laughs> and director hated me. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop beefing, y'all. We love both of you. And um, and uh, I hate to see it. Even though I like it, it's fun to have a little drama in the comedy world. I, they probably both know what it is. It's good for both of them. They're, like you said, they're both probably I having hope, some fun. It's just like there's a couple words that are out there that are like in comedy are, it's tough to have handshakes after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? The hack and then failed. Yeah. Calling someone a hack is tough and then calling someone a failed comic is tough. Yeah. It's hard to just be like, man, we were just playing. Yeah. That Those are tricky things. So I hope that they can squash that shit and eventually they will. Uh, any last thoughts, Duff? Production side, Hollywood side. What is your What is your thought? I mean, to your point, it it definitely is going to benefit him tomorrow when the special drops. But I'm watching. You think about it. Yeah. To your point about Dylan has the podcast and can drive people to the theaters and this whole thing of like having multiple things. Chase, the head writer of SNL, SNL has 12 million YouTube uh, followers, 5 million Instagram followers, and they're not pushing his special one bit. Even if it is on Netflix, you would yeah. think like you'd get some support from the machine, but like Che it just shows like he needs yeah. this. That's, that's interesting. Rough. That's interesting. That's rough, yeah. You yeah, that's interesting. You could be the head writer of this institution, but because that institution is competing with another institution, they cannot promote your shit. Yeah. So you have to I mean, this is just a perfect example of what's going on in the game right now. You have to have another outlet. Mm -hmm. And if you're not using your Instagram to like put up content or make it a place where people can see you. Right. I mean, like if there's no pictures or images or videos on your Instagram, why follow? You have to have content. What's the purpose? Right. So if you can't push people to your special through the Instagram, you can't do it through Twitter. I don't even know if Chase on Twitter. Like you, you really handcuffed. Yeah. It's like you almost got to go with the beef strategy. Yeah. You got to stir some shit up. Because that's the only other way. You can't just go on a podcast and be like, yo, I got a special coming out. Yeah, and this is great because it's so close to the special. You're going to hate watch it immediately. Yeah. Because you're not going to have time to forget. And then it just, the algorithm just going to push it up and up and up. And you can't go on Rogan after that's (laughs) good. Like, like it it is very limited, the promotional opportunities go. But some people follow Che for the post and delete. Like, even though he doesn't have, like, regular content up, like, they want to see, like, oh, he's got a thing going on. He's, like, talking about this thing, and then he deletes it. So uh, I have to follow him in order to see it. Oh, uh, I see, I see, I see. So, uh, like, strategically, it might be another angle. It creates, like, a scarcity. Yeah. Uh, I see, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, the kid is sharp, man. Like, Yeah. He's, he's and I think sharp. this special is going to be really good. He's I had years so. to put it in. Like, I think it's going to be good. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, and the normal progress is like, okay, you're the head writer of SNL. Eventually, I don't think he's going to leave it fully. Maybe he relinquishes that, just becomes, you know, someone who comes in to get featured on a bit here or there. But they all want to then become so big outside of it yeah. and then return for as a host. Big episodes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's all. It's also hard to leave it, man. Like, that's another thing. Like the way that the way that Che was, and then we will wrap this up. We already talked long enough about these guys who can't sell no tickets, man. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> these, these club acts. We already talked long enough right. about these club acts. Right. You know what I mean? You sold more tickets than they ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I insert myself in the beef <laughs> immediately. Guys, stop Fuck beefing. you both. Yeah, yeah. They just team up and clobber me. <laughs> no, um, but uh. But that that was an interesting thing that when when he was going like Tim Dillon question mark exclamation point to, yeah. like like who is this like who yeah. is this person talking this is what's interesting about that now Che is aware of what's happening in the world because of his proximity to comedy but if he was just a person who was like in Hollywood yeah like doing this film is one of the most fascinating experiences in the world H Hollywood will be the, the people who like run Hollywood will be the last people to know that it's failed yeah or that the model has changed right. You know, it's like uh, the emperor is the last one to know that the kingdom has fallen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's it's um, basically what happens is you're like you're encased with a group of people like you're in your little bubble. Yeah. And nobody is really valuing anything outside the bubble. Like everybody's convinced that that bubble is the most important thing in the world. I'm sure we do with podcasting and YouTube and stand up as well. Like we all think stand up is so fucking important and the whole world is going to crumble without it. But the average person's like. Wait, Chappelle was talking about trannies? What are yeah, you talking yeah, yeah. about? Like, it just means nothing to them, right? right? But like, and on that film, the people that are like in the film, the people like the actors and like the head producer, that kind of, those kind of people like that, they have no clue what we're doing. Right. Now, I'm not trying to like define stuff in terms of like money, but like, we're probably making more money than most people on that film. I, I'm being, like, if that's success, like, we're, yeah. we're, but they don't know that this is even a thing. They're like, oh, a podcast? Yeah, my nephew has a podcast. Yeah. Everybody has a podcast. Like, they don't understand really like what's shifting culture now because yeah. they're so wrapped up in what is Hollywood yeah. and what is filmmaking. Yeah. The people who do know me or what we got going on over here, the key grips, huh. the catering, the lighting guys, yeah. like all the regular people yeah. know what's happened. They know what's shifted, right? Right. But the people in the castle... They're like the guys defending the wall in yeah. Game of Thrones. They the first motherfuckers. Yeah. Right? T TSA sees Andrew's uh, business in first TSA class. TSA knows yeah. who the fuck we are. People in first class might not. Right, right, right. Do you know what I'm saying? But the people, it's Fight Club, yeah. dog. And it's they're like, like, yo, White Walkers are out there. And the industry's <laughs> like, come on with that shit, yo. Right? Come on. Just Cersei Lannister is yeah. about to get our whole fucking King's Landing torch. Yeah. So it, it's just very interesting to see how culture shifts. And it does always shift with the people. And we got, that's something that we got to make sure that is very important for us. Like as we grow and we start to have the opportunity to live in castles that we don't do it. Mm -hmm. Once we have the opportunity to live in the, yo, it's cushy in the castle. Yeah. 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 All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second. Cause I need y'all to make some fucking money, man. If you're out here gambling on these games, gambling on these fights, if you're out here gambling at all, I need you to make some money. And the way that y'all going to do it is going to mybookie.ag. Why are you going to my bookie? I'll tell you why, because they're matching that initial deposit bonus. Yes, that's free money for you to gamble and win with. Don't you want to make more money? Well, if you can invest more, if you can gamble more, then you have the opportunity to make more. And that's easy when they're fucking giving it to you. They will give you, they will match that initial deposit bonus if you use the promo code flagrant. Okay, you go to mybookie.ag, use the promo code flagrant. All right, this Sunday, two powerhouse offenses meet when the Kansas City Chiefs take on the Dallas Cowboys. Them boys have been on a tear this season while yep. the Chiefs continue to struggle. So take the Cowboys to cover the spread so you can walk away with the bread that's my bookie okay remember they're doubling that first deposit bonus so double your money all right bet anytime bet anything and bet anywhere with mybookie.ag make sure you use that promo code flagrant now let's get back to the show this is something i think i was talking to you the other day with uh, mark and i was like i gotta keep consuming I don't know if I was maybe talking on the mm -hmm. podcast with about this or maybe it was just you, but like I gotta keep consuming. It's easy to go home and just chill with my girl and have a great meal and love up on each other and watch a show. No, I gotta watch Succession because y'all are watching it. Mm -hmm. I gotta listen to the fucking Wall Street Journal every morning, the daily fifteen minutes, what's going on, because y'all are paying attention 
not only y'all, but the people at home are paying attention to what's going on in the markets. Right. It's easy with success to, I mean, I'm not being critical. I understand it, but like, you know, seeing what happened with Eddie Murphy, like being so removed yeah. from life, so removed from culture, he's probably happier because right. of it. Yep. But I still want to fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in order to fight, we got to train. You want longevity, you stay plugged in. Chris Rock stays plugged the fuck in. Dave reading Chappelle, the fucking newspaper every single day. Dave, reading. I'm sure either reading or like conversations with yeah. people. It's like, we keep, we got to keep going, bro. Yeah. Like, it's just, and this is what, and, and you see what happens to the people that don't. And they just continue to surround themselves with people who also aren't. Yeah. And now they're just living in the castle and having no fucking clue that there's a rebellion happening outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think that's Jay because he's a comic. He knows what's going on in the world. Yeah, he's a comic first. But I do know that there are people in the industry yeah. that do believe that. Yeah. And they have no fucking clue. And the criticism, they just wipe off because like, why would we even care? This isn't, they're not even making TV shows. They're not even doing this. Yeah. It don't matter anymore. What do you say to 188K a month though? Or 190 or whatever it is. Yeah. What do you say to that? Yeah. When you find out somebody's making that much a month, you know, I'll count pockets because it was yeah. said 190, but he just keeps bringing up 188. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you went to go check the. No, check I don't the know because you know Patreon numbers aren't always accurate. So sometimes guys, ours are actually higher than what you're seeing. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah, what do you yeah. say to one guy getting that? You gonna say he not doing nothing? That's two and a half million on a podcast Patreon. Yeah, you know how many people would quit comedy for that? Yeah, 100%. You know how many people would love to fail at comedy that way? Oh, my <laughs> Yo, God, dude. I guarantee most of the people that are doing comedy would love to fail at comedy Yeah, I'm a way. failed comic who's uh, got an account I with like Goldman Sachs. fail at comedy and have a patron that's doing those type of numbers and tour theaters. Yeah. Mm. That seems like a pretty good way to fail. Yeah. yeah. You it, failed up hard yeah. as fuck. I think it's inevitable, yeah. though. It's going to happen. Like, but all, and also, to, to, to you know, for, uh, to defend Che, like, to... Not be able to read and become the head writer at <laughs> SNL, that's also a pretty good thing, too. Like, I think they're both maxing out. Yeah. They're, mo- they're both maxing out their failure. The response to, you're a drunk who can barely read and just say fair point, is that's really funny to me. All fair points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he couldn't read it. That's why I said fair point. <laughs> he's, just, he's, just like, he's just like, these seem good. I think, I think he was probably being complimentary. No. Um... What were you about to say, Mark? No, I just think it's like inevitable. Like there's TikTok kids making crazy money, like yeah. super successful. I don't even know. Like yeah, bro. I don't know what streamers doing does. shit. I was talking to Mateo. He was like, Oh yeah, you know Bob the Drag Queen? I was like, No. Doing theaters for the last like twenty years. Yeah. Like ultra famous, whatever, just yeah. I'm not aware of it. Yeah. But it's up to us to stay plugged into it. Yeah. And you are more aware of it than the average person. I think you're maybe less aware than like one of the people that's in that community and mm-hmm. finds that important. Right. But like in terms of what's going on, you know, may, I think you kind of plugged. I in. mean, aware is like the exact word though. Like I'm not plugged in mm, to like fair, different fair, fair. communities that are outside like of my Chifty interest. Like Chifty is plugged in. Even if it's not in his community, he knows what the fuck is going on. Maybe. Yeah. You see him hating? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Can Chifty live, bro? He can't even be good at TikToking. No, that's yeah, what I'm saying. You can't, you can't just is. let him be better than you. But at my watching point is TikToks? that everyone's outside of their own little community. No, no, I know. That is what the internet has created. Yeah. Right. And um, yeah, it's it's we just can't we just can't fall victim to success. Yeah. And and discredit anything that we don't know about. Right. And it's very easy to do that. Yeah. To just be like, oh yeah, they're like a Twitch streamer. Who cares? Yeah. But then once you see them numbers, you go, oh shit. Yeah. Why are we not on Twitch? One hundred percent. At the very least, this guy doing something. Yeah, Aiden Ross failing at something very well. I don't know what yeah. he failed something. He failed something, yeah. and I need to figure out what that thing is. Yeah, yeah, motherfuckers are on his shit. Anyway, let's talk about some other stuff. So Chappelle's still in trouble. God, no I'm shocked at how long this is going. Also, how happy is he? He didn't have to go to his high school fundraiser. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the, I think he leaked this story himself. Yo, yeah. I think he made fun of trans people just so he wouldn't have to do events like that. It's like yeah. when Larry David put on the MAGA hat. Exactly. Yeah. Just avoid everything. It's like, yo, have a controversy, and then you never have to do any of the you're a good guy speech, shit. speech, fucking the booster thon fun run. You're like, I got to donate 10 bucks every time a kid runs around. Like... Because they come for your ass, dude. Yeah. The second you're popping, popping, they come with that charity stuff. Yeah. Oh, this, oh, blah, blah, blah for cancer. And it's like, how you say no to cancer, dog? Yeah. Mm. The person with the cancer couldn't even say no to cancer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the least you could do, that's your cousin. That's yeah. your family member. Yeah. You're going to say no to that shit? Yeah. And you can't just throw money at the problem, even though that's what they want. Yeah. Because they only want your money. They want other people's money right. to save that person. I get yeah. it. I think COVID also helped a lot of people with that. 
Go, go. Because they're like, John Cena's like, wait, I can just FaceTime these kids? I don't got to actually go. <laughs> like, that's such a huge help. Before I don't got to break through the wall no I more. I can fucking fly over to Portland and be like the Kool-Aid, man. Like, now I can just fucking, I can just go on a Zoom call? Like, that's great. <laughs> Yo, it is so much easier to be a celeb, bro. Yo, yeah. Thank God these kids are immunocompromised, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that's just not going away. Even if you got the vaccine, I mean, you can still get it. Yeah. yeah. Immunocompromised, yeah. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, The hardest part of the pandemic is not going to the, the ward anymore and <laughs> talking to those kids. Yeah, that's the toughest part of the <laughs> pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Damn, dude. Aaron Rodgers actually just figured out that loophole. He yeah. doesn't, uh, you know, the whole thing with the vaccine. He has to now wear masks in the uh, press conference afterwards. He doesn't want to wear the masks. He has. To, he does it via Zoom. Love oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy's a genius. I love it. This guy's a um, genius. So yeah, it's just interesting what's going on with the high school because I listen. I, maybe this shows how like old I am. I just can't fathom. There's like a whole high school. That's that's watching the special going. This was so incredibly offensive to this one community that we can't even have him it speak. It is at a, a performing arts high school, so it's probably a lot of LGBTs yeah. so there were a bunch in kids that bitch. were that were wanting to walk out. Oh, so like, comes, you think Chappelle like, went to a black high school? Oh, yeah, my bad. That's, that's crazy. Right. That's, right. that's, that's right. what are we that's talking right. about? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, nuts. Yeah. This guy's yeah, from yeah, Silver yeah. Spring, Maryland. Yeah. Him and Blau are neighbors. Get out oh, of is here. That right? Yeah. Hey, well, you're welcome, Chappelle. <laughs> white people. <laughs> I made nice performing arts high schools. Well, apparently not that nice because he had to like go and donate a bunch of money to it, and they were supposed to change the name of the theater to make it Dave Chappelle. The Dave Chappelle Theater. Yeah. Oh. And they and they didn't actually cancel it. They just postponed. Postponed it. it. They need funny. that check, bro. They literally said they were postponing it to April. <laughs> yeah, they wanted it to be closer to Pride Month. This is what they wanted. <laughs> Let's do it at a time where this really... way when they walk out, yeah. they might be going to the parade. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. They're like, yeah, they'll be out of school anyway. Yeah. yeah. It's a holiday for them. Damn, man. But yeah. Ugh. Whatever. Let the kids do it. I don't know. <laughs> what? Wait, what? I'm like so like exhausted by the discussion. It's crazy how they, that's what I'm saying. They, if Trump was in office, this shit would have gone away in two weeks. There would have been some other controversy. Trump would have said something, and then people would have pushed Chappelle to the side. Ah, uh, yeah, Biden yeah. been napping this whole fucking yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. would have covered this up a lot. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now that is true. Things moved quicker. We got over things faster. Yeah, definitely in the Trump era. He just gave us much more to sink our teeth into. He gave, he gave us fodder, man. Just yeah. move on. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. What's the next thing? Mm. But yeah. Yeah, it's tricky, man. I don't know. I don't know how long this is gonna last. I guess it will last as long as people uh, have the ability to virtue signal. And I'd be okay, to be honest. Like, I'm okay if people push back. Like, you have the freedom to do that. Do whatever the fuck you want. I, I just don't like this idea that the jokes kill trans people. Mm. It's yeah. just a little extreme. The jokes are literally violence? Yeah, 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 the, yeah. This is literal violence, and this is how trans people get killed. And it's like, someone who's ready to kill a trans people person, like... They didn't need to see the special. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, there's not the first of all, I don't even know if there's people on the fence with murdering trans people. I think you're very clearly on one side of that yeah, or yeah, the other yeah. side. Yeah. And um, and then those who do it are just going to do it. But like the special is not helping you. They're not making not it that deep it. into the special anyway. It's 40 minutes in. You think yeah. they're watching the whole fucking thing yeah. for the trans hate? They're yeah. not smart enough to have that attention span. Yeah. Nah, bro. They feel how they feel. My jokes do not incite hate. They do not. Yeah. They are jokes. Yeah. Judge me about my intentions. Yes. And the intention yeah. is to make you laugh and, you know, maybe you'd be a little crazy. Yeah. That's it. That's a dope form of comedy, though. Like, hate inciting comedy. You, you got to be <laughs> nice with your shit. That'd be sick. Yeah. Unless the audience nice is moshing, like, I don't think the, the jokes are inciting violence. Yeah. If they're moshing at the show, then I'm like, oh, I can see it. Like, yeah. there's a vibe happening. I mean, how, yeah, I just don't understand how someone could go to a comedy show and then after they want to, like, murder trans people. And that's what they're saying. I mean, that's what some people are saying. Like, that's the literally violent. I people. see that tweet a lot. I think most people are saying it's like normalizing an attitude against trans people. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. And that be, and I could see you being frustrated by that. And that's frustrated. the moderate. Like, you as like a trans person and you're out here like, yo, I'm not fucking lying about this shit. Yeah. I'm a girl. Yeah. Right. Which to someone who's not trans is a wild statement. Yeah. Right. Like you see a person that looks like a dude go, I'm a girl. Yeah. You're like, OK. But deep down, you're like, no. Nope. Mm <laughs> hmm. But you can't say that because then that's... They look at you thing. like... Uh, you ever seen a cat that acts like a dog? That's how they look at you. I've never seen that. Oh, son, there's never some. seen that? A cat that plays fetch? No. Really? No. Oh, no, they got it. Is that what you meant by a cat that acts like a dog? Yeah, yeah. They got cats that legit, they'll play fetch. They'll do all this dog-ass behavior. Yeah. I mean, that's what... That's the best pet ever. 
Yeah, it's awesome. One hundred percent. A dog with personal responsibility. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, uh, well, yeah. Where, where do we it's find It's an autonomous you dog, them. but you 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 got to luck out and get one. Otherwise, you get a cat, cat, and that's and you can't yeah. train it to be that. Nah, way. nah. Fucking you're just thing. born that way. Pure dog. luck. You're just yeah. born that way. It's not luck. Dog. Yeah, yeah, God made you that way. Yeah. Yeah. You were assigned dog at birth, but you're actually a trans animal. Yeah. Yeah, man, that should be proof, if nothing else, that trans is real. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're still talking about it right now. What if we just do like a remember like a, a day without a Mexican? Remember that thing? Yeah. Like what? It you don't remember movie, that guys. thing? Yeah. I, no, it was like a, it was, a, a, it was a holiday every yeah. year. They would do like a day without a Mexican. I think like uh, what happens? Like Mexicans was, don't work that day. It was a holiday like every year. It was a holiday. <laughs> I, I it's didn't, like Rosh Hashanah. didn't feel like a holiday to me. It felt awful. <laughs> you know what I mean? We but exchanged like, gifts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We I'm had a tree. There's a day without a Mexican, wasn't it? Yeah, but it was a movie. Oh, it was a movie? What yeah. are you talking about? Why would they make a movie a holiday. about that? What is a day without a Mexican? Yeah, Mexicans don't have to be Mexican that day. <laughs> Wait, what do they dress up as? This idea that they're, that they're integral in all parts of our daily life, but then underappreciated, blah, 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 and let's see what happens when you yeah. go a day without a Mexican. Falls apart. Didn't, bunch, they, didn't they do like a... Bunch of white people just getting jobs they hate. Yeah. Fucking yeah. miserable. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be rough, dude. There's a but no, didn't they do something like last year where they're like uh like for like a week or for a day it was like only spend money on black businesses. Black people did this. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Right? And it was like a way of putting like economic sanctions on everybody that's not black. Right? Uh, like, right, right, right. And I think that basically the day without a Mexican, I think it was like if you're a Mexican, like just stay home. Don't work that day. So everybody can feel how integral you are to the US economy. Mm -hmm. uh. Right? And um we know. <laughs> like I don't think there's anybody who's like we couldn't do this or we could do this without Mexicans. Yeah, right? yeah. I think we all know how valuable and important Mexicans are, <laughs> yeah. right? We're not going to pay them anymore because they're Mexicans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's why you're so integral. Yes, it's because you do it all, but we don't really pay you. Yeah, yes. that's why we need you. Yes, <laughs> come on. Yes, and now's the time. I mean, like you know what's so funny? Like we're trying to like stop these like caravans from coming into the United States of America, and then in the same breath we're like we need more employees. It's we unbelievable. Can't hire anybody. We can't get anybody to come work the in the garage we is... can't get anybody to work at restaurants we can't get anybody to do anything and we literally have all these people knocking on the door like we work at garages <laughs> we work at restaurants we do all the jobs that you need to hire people for and you refuse to do because you were given thirteen hundred dollars twice yeah the wall is causing the labor shortage there right. it is right there we don't even have the wall but like the, we clearly have an issue right like on the same news broadcasts people need to be hired for these jobs. We have supply shortages because there's labor, labor shortages. Nobody's going to go do the job. We can't deliver after 12. Every fucking hotel says, oh, I'm sorry, we can't clean unless you ask us to clean because there's nobody to do it. Every restaurant, in-room dining, and every fucking thing, oh, we don't do that anymore because we can't hire any people. There are people, the same people you hired, mm. ready to go. Mm. Am I making a, a bad argument here? No, it's a great point. Let the caravans in. Who's not working? <laughs> but you gotta disperse them though You gotta have some type of bus system To get them uh, around the country That's the caravan they'll, dog yeah. They'll get around You think they'll yeah. walk there? <laughs> yes We were just in Chicago Tons of Mexicans Yeah They'll find a way dude <laughs> They will I'm not worried about that I'm just saying like That should be the ultimatum That's what I would do to Americans I'd be like yo You better start working Or we letting these motherfuckers in <laughs> Yo get to work Yeah that's You know what point. I mean? No more of this unemployment shit We let we, hey, Cause once they're in There's no chance for you Yeah the only reason, if you're white and you're like a dishwasher or some shit like that, the only reason you have a job is because that restaurant has never had a Mexican do the job. Yeah. <laughs> Once they hire a Mexican, it's over. you're never working again. Yeah. Yeah. You have one shot. Yeah. You have one shot. Get your fucking ass back to work yeah. or go to school. Yeah. Do something. But once they hire the Mexicans, it's over, bro. Yeah. Have you ever seen a business have a Mexican workforce and then all of a sudden not have a Mexican workforce? No. Yeah, INS comes through. That's the way. They get more Mexicans. <laughs> they don't, you, you don't, once you go Mexican, you don't go anywhere else. I'm being serious. Name one business. I got one. You I can't name one. No. Chinese people hire Mexicans. <laughs> hey, even other minorities who come here to bust their ass, yeah. look at their own people. And there's yeah. enough fucking Chinese people. Trust me. Yeah. They look at their own people and they're like, you can't do this. Yeah. You can't do Chinese shit. <laughs> Mexicans are better at doing Chinese shit than Chinese people. Unbelievable. <laughs> what? That's a good. What do you mean? What? What's, what's confusing about this? Son, you go, into a, you go into a Chinese restaurant. They got Mexican dudes making Chinese shit. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, we have to have a Mexican a face shit? up front, and then everybody else in the back is Mexican. What yes. else, I mean, a what Chinese else is Chinese, Chinese shit, though? Say what? What else is like Chinese shit? Food, bro. Food, dogs. <laughs> what about? else? Well, most things are probably Chinese shit. Everything that we're wearing or sitting on is probably made in China right now. Yeah. And if they had Mexicans out there, they'd fucking use them. I guarantee you. <laughs> yeah. I guarantee you. I'm being serious. This is, we need to play hardball with Americans. Yeah. This is your last chance to work forever. <laughs> this is your last chance to work for good. Yeah. You'll never work again. Yeah. If you don't go take a job right now. Yeah. Because they're going to get in. They're going to find a way in. That's what they do. These people are resilient. Mm. I respect it. You got motherfuckers sitting home on the couch smoking weed with your fucking stimmy check or unemployment. Mm. Refusing to go back to the job that you had before. You're not better than the job. <laughs> you did it already. That was your job. <laughs> mm. Preach, dog. Yeah, Keep you're going. upset at the business for not paying you more? Where was that energy before? Yeah, there's no yeah. promotion. No <laughs> promo. Back to work. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And if you don't, then what? It's gone. Mm. You're going to see what happens. You're going to see what And then don't bitch then. Don't oh, cry they're gonna then. bitch. They're going to bitch. Don't move to fucking San Francisco or Portland, be homeless or whatever like that. No, <laughs> we're not doing that kind of shit. Yeah. That should be illegal. White homelessness. Well, how do you know they're all just sitting at home? What if they like got other jobs or like better jobs? They did. <laughs> Why not? They did. He also said white homelessness should be illegal. I'm into it. Explain. It just Because be I think illegal. we all feel that way. I'm not giving a dollar to a come white on, homeless. Bro. Come on, come Get on. your life together. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Get your life together, bro. Every white homeless person I see got a phone or a fucking tablet. Oh, yeah, that's kind of weird when they got Leisure the Leisure activities like reading and shit like that. If I see a motherfucking homeless person begging and reading, this is the problem, bro. Even the stories. Work! Even the stories. My dad kicked me out of the house. Go back. Apologize. What are you talking about? <laughs> Their sad what? story. You never get the homeless person with the sad story on the train? Uh, you know, my dad kicked me out of the house. Times are hard. Go back yeah, to your yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, Just apologize yeah, yeah. to your dad. Usually they say some wilder shit than that. They're like, I got AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> Not my dad kicked me out of the house. <laughs> That's crazy. That's why they got kicked out. They yeah. opened they up AIDS. with my dad kicked me out? Yeah, I've my dad kicked me dad out of the house because I found, he found out I was adulthood. gay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, because they were gay. Whatever, bro. You gonna suck somebody's dick? Sucking dicks under my roof. <laughs> you know what I mean? You think I'm gonna let my daughter suck dicks under my roof? I'm not gonna let my son suck dicks under my roof too. <laughs> Nobody's sucking dicks under my roof, including my wife. <laughs> if I'm not getting it, nobody yeah, getting it. Yeah, come on. There's some sweet dick sucks in my house. It's not me. Come on, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh. Gotta use my own saliva to have sex. You know how embarrassing that is? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Come on, that's crazy. That's a crazy time. So you would kick your gay kid out not for being gay, but because because he's sucking dicks. You yes. can't suck dick under my roof. Go somewhere else. Yo, all right? you stuck in listen, I'll kick my gay kid out for mad reasons. <laughs> like what? I'm tired of the gay shit. <laughs> <laughs> like that could be enough. Like What's the gay shit? Like if he's like singing Being the house? 19 and in my house. <laughs> that's, that's gay that super gay? gay nah okay what else well if he's gay and he's 19 he's in my house you getting kicked out yeah what if he's straight and he's 19 and he's in you getting house? kicked out okay Wait, why? fair enough why? you can be there for the summer cause you're too old how long did you live with your parents for until I was 30 okay <laughs> <laughs> so I was 30 years old gay? I was raised in a dance studio that's pretty fucking gay if you ask me I don't know honestly <laughs> it, was, it was way past 30 it was really? like 34 35 cause, nah cause wow. stop playing cause, cause 30 wow. I owned an apartment by 35 yeah, yeah, that's, where you that's moved. when you moved out of your parents' house. <laughs> I did. Where do you think you went between? I was a renter somewhere. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, you you gotta kick these motherfuckers yeah. out the house, bro. <laughs> you were renting a part of your parents' house. <laughs> you built a wall <laughs> and a kitchen. Cuban as fuck, Yo, dude. what kind of piece of shit parents I got, man? <laughs> Making me pay money to live with them. Why'd you bring me in this world, yo? Yeah, you didn't ask for this. Yeah, I'm out there <laughs> getting my dick sucked all the goddamn time. In, in their house? Yes, yo, you, so you yo, are a piece of shit. Yo, probably, I get my dick suck in my parents' house. You probably got your wow. dick suck if you add up cumulative, just the amount of years you lived at yeah. home. You probably got your dick suck more under your dad's roof than anywhere else yo, on Yo, nobody Earth. got their dick suck more than my dad, though. <laughs> wait, why? What? Nah, 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 you don't know he got his dick suck. <laughs> wait, 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 nah, wait, nah, he was fucking. What? I seen him post fuck. Yeah. But I don't know wait, if he was getting, you don't know if you he was getting his him? dick suck. I seen that motherfucker walk out the house and naked. You don't walk see out the bedroom. Big dick, big dick. Wait, how do you know it's post fuck? 
I mean, because that shit was still hard. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, my man. dad would walk out, walk around with the Hardy. <laughs> medium he swole. You were medium swole when I saw him. Yeah. I usually saw the Winnie the Pooh only wearing a T-shirt with the yep. grandfather clock yep. just swinging. Yep. <laughs> he tried to cover yep. it up. <laughs> oh, he, sorry. He'd be, <laughs> he be fake covering it up too. He'd be like, "Oh my bad." He barely even covered it. Balls hanging out the side. Nah, he was big dicked. He was a big dick Mark, guy. Fat life. dick. Looked like a waifu. <laughs> <laughs> That's how his dick looked like right there, bro. But just walking oh around proud. God. I had the homies over and everything like that. <laughs> You've seen dicks, dog. Yeah, bro. You've seen, seen dicks. Dick. Hey, who's got a bigger dick? You or my dad? So your dad's yeah, not even dad close, beast, bro. Joe. Yo, it's yeah. not even close, my bro. Dad beast, Why did he bro. do that? Was he trying to send a message? Long dick Larry, yeah, bro. Yeah, he just need to, you know, make sure that everybody respect him in the house. <laughs> Larry Long dick. It's son. hard not to respect the biggest dick. Not the only thing that's hard, bro. <laughs> Yo, he was he was stiff. He was stiff. It yeah. happened. All I'm trying to say is Americans get back to work, okay? <laughs> get back to work. All right. All right, guys, we're gonna take a break for a second because my favorite part of this time of year is the food. I can never get enough of how amazing everything smells. And speaking of smells, I have to tell you about Native's awesome new holiday inspired scented products. Okay, Native cares about the products you put on your body. They're all about stopping the stink, but stopping it the right way. That's the native difference. You heard me talk about Native's legendary aluminum-free deodorant. Native's mission is to overhaul your entire hygiene routine by creating products that are made with the simple ingredients like shea butter and coconut oil so you can smell great all day long. With classics and rotating seasonals, Native has a scent for everyone, okay? Try their holiday-scented deodorant, body wash, or toothpaste in scents like candy candy sugar cookie and fresh mistletoe sugar Friend. cookie that's the one that's the one she smells delicious all right man get you some sugar cookie all i'm trying to say is giving the gift of self-care is easy with native build yourself or loved ones personalized product bundles by mixing and matching three of your favorite holiday scented products into a set now sugar cookie is the one that Akash is saying you got to run with. You want something a little sweeter, then you go get that. I'm going to trust him. My man knows scents. He knows flavors. His people have great cuisine. They have... And we got to cover that scent up, bro. We got to cover, cover that, that scent, scent up. That's a great point. You know I mean? So stay merry and happy and fresh this holiday season. You will love Native's limited time seasonal products as much as we do. Go to nativedeodorant.com. And use the code flagrant to get 20% off your first purchase at checkout. That's nativedeodorant.com. Use the promo code flagrant for 20% off. Nativedeodorant.com and the promo code is flagrant. Now let's get back to the show. All right, guys, what else we got going on? All right, Portnoy has, uh, it looks like he's officially beat his Me Too. So Portnoy, that, that motherfucker is genius. Yeah. You could beat a Me Too, but just by switching the narrative. Yeah. Like, you don't even got to prove innocence, even though there was nothing to prove his guilt, right? You don't, usually the trickiest thing about a Me Too is once you're branded, once you're radioactive, that's how the world sees you. Yeah. So you got to switch the branding and you got to move the radioactivity onto someone else. Mm. Yep. So he comes in. He has the branding, and they were trying to label. They didn't say he was a rapist in the article, but they were fucking saying yeah. it, dog. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were saying he was on some real wild, like, non-consensual, devious shit. Yeah. Yeah. They said, oh, we didn't use the word rapist. Like, you know what the fuck you meant. Judge people yeah. by their intentions. Yeah. Okay? Yes. Not your interpretation. You know what you intended. And they were ready to throw this man under the fucking jail, dude. Mm. Like, that's it. Done. Mm. And he switched the narrative not to, hey, I'm innocent. Hey, I'm innocent. We still talking about rape. Yeah. Innocent of what? What are you referring to? He switched it to, this is a hit piece. Yeah. And these people are after me. And this is why these people aren't after me. And here's all the proof. And she's hated me for this long. And this person is an absolute fraud. And frauds do things for money. And look what they're doing. They're putting this article behind a paywall. He switched the whole narrative to business insider hit piece. Yep. And now it has nothing to do with whether or not he raped him. That's how you beat the Me Too. You he scream about it. your innocence. He addressed it. He said, I'm innocent. He cleared that up. And then he spent the rest of the time. Sure, sure. The rest of the but time you is switching. Make the argument about the innocence. Yep. Like Bill Cosby to this day is just going, I'm innocent. I'm innocent. I'm yep. innocent. We're like, you're a rapist. Mm. If Bill Cosby literally came out and leans into the conspiracy and he was like, why all this shit started when I tried to buy NBC? Yeah. Like mm. if he leaned into what everybody is talking about in terms of conspiracy, why is this woman who is hired by this person who worked at NBC the first person to come out? 
Why is this person who wrote the article who's connected to, you know, uh, you know Viagom or whatever the you know parent company of NBC, uh, Paramount or whatever the fuck it is, why that? If you just start leaning into the conspiracy, now the conversation is over whether they're trying to get Bill Cosby out of here and not whether he's, you know, drugging women and fucking him. Yep. yep. I mean, it's clever. It's, it's like genius, dude. This guy's brilliant. The guy knows it. He understands. And he also has the media arm. There's a perfect example. You want to go back to the Tim Dillon and Che beef? It's like, if... Che gives me two, and Tim Dillon gives me two. Who do you think has a better opportunity to clear their own name? Mm. Tim. Yeah. Yeah. You Chase. have the people. Yeah. yeah. Chase fired day one. I'm just off. If something happens. Absolutely. Yeah. Just the accusation. So. I mean, yeah, if you can't get fired in general, you have a lot of leverage. Like, a lot. There's a lot of security just in life. That's right, because now people aren't calling up Portnoy and they're like, hey, this is how you handle it. He goes, I handle however the fuck I want to handle it. Yeah. You're not my boss because yep. your boss could call you and they could be like, hey, if you want to keep working here, you're going to say these things. Right. Not knowing that those are actually the worst things to say. Yeah. Yep. They're just playing scared. And then yes. he's coming on the offensive. Portnoy went so crazy on them because the, what they can do. I still don't know what the fuck they, they, he did. I, I just know that it's a hit piece because he said it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we, we have no fucking clue. I'm assuming it's, it's lies. I'm assuming all these things are happening. Right. Because I've done a little reading about it and there's nothing really conc concrete. Right. But it could be true. But he's convinced me it's not, and he's convinced me. He's convinced me intention. they're unethical, yes. so their accusations are baseless. He's got screenshots, which is evidence that he didn't do it, and, and or some evidence that he didn't do it. And then, if you add that with they're unethical, they'll put out hit pieces. They are not. Uh, they don't act like uh, in good conscience. Then yeah, they're probably wrong. And and his reasoning for believing that it was a hit piece really early was if they really believed it was rape, they would have made the accusation in the article, which then. Starts up a criminal process. Exactly. Now you gotta get investigated. So he knew off because he Yo. was. They were trying to get him interviewed. Yo, and that's he's like, a great. Problem. Let's record the interview, but put that interview on camera. We want to see the whole thing. And yeah, that's a great point right there. If they say the R word, it's a criminal investigation. Mm -hmm. If they're not saying it's rape, it's a hit piece hit by piece. definition. Character assassination. He either did something illegal, and you guys are pointing that out so that he can get justice, or you're just trying to sell copies. Mm -hmm. mm. So if you're saying explicitly he didn't do anything illegal, and we said in the article he didn't do anything illegal, then why are you writing this? Mm. Just because it's going to drum up views that yeah. you're asking people to pay for? Yeah. That's a hit piece by definition. You fucked yourself. And then yeah. he found the email that uh, Business Insider was sending to his advertisers. With like a oh, hyperlink to yeah. that that's article what they coming do. out. That's so that's what, what they you do. can do on someone that has a network. And he just said no. But that's the thing about Barstool that I respect is that they keep saying that to the to the advertisers. They say, fuck y'all, we'll do it without y'all. Mm. And they've done that for decades or a decade, however long they've been around. Yeah. But like from the beginning, they're like, yeah, if you don't want to do business with us, it's fine. And low key, I fucking respect that because it's like you High don't key. benefit from the fact that we're wild boys, we being Barstool. And you, the brand, are going to benefit. And matter of fact, anything that you, any product that gets advertised with us, you're probably going to see twice as much because of how much of our fans love us, right. support us, and hold us down. And the second there's a little issue with the same kind of wild boy behavior, now you want to leave? Yeah. We're not going to have that. Yeah. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. We need right. brands that actually stick around. My pillow. Yeah. <laughs> that motherfucker is, that guy is loyal. He's die. the most ride or die. 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 So That's I'm a Tuck, bottom bitch, They were dog. showing up to Tucker Carlson's house like Beauty and the Beast, bro. <laughs> Remember when they stormed that motherfucker? They came with the, the torches and all that kind of shit. It, they were at Tucker Carlson's house and my pillow was ready to go to war for Tucker. I think he was like 50% of the advertisements on Tucker's show. Really? Do you remember this when they started taking all the ads off oh, of Tucker's yeah, show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was mm. the only ad. So he, I, listen, I sleep good at night <laughs> knowing I'm with Tucker. Like, this, this is, hey, that's what we need from our sponsors. Yeah. We need my pillow guy enthusiasm. <laughs> my pillow energy. Real talk. Real talk. I would accept the ad from my pillow. How are you political about pillows? <laughs> like everybody sleeps We don't got that in common You want to be comfy When you sleep Yeah, yeah. Are good the pillows pillow. good I've never used one Son it's your pillow though It should be good That shit is your pillow Yeah I guess That's but a like, great name I never used me undies either And like that, those are supposed To be my undies Yeah you know I mean? that's a good point Shout out culprit Yeah yeah, yeah. We use a different type I'll, Of undies I'll over here I only do culprit but uh, no, that is a good point. I don't know if they're good. I don't know if they're good. You need to have a good pillow, man. Uh, yeah, that's why I like my pillow. I don't trust memory foam. 
Go. Memory foam is remembering all the shit you do. You know, it's what like, mean? A, like it's like yeah, having yeah. two wives, yeah, bro. I don't need that shit. Yeah, memory foam is like, well, actually, you said this on the podcast. It's like, no, no, no. my pillow do doesn't remember anything. Do you think that's what women's brains are made out of? <laughs> <laughs> do you think that's what it is? <laughs> Something like that, so that they remember everything. <laughs> See what I was doing there? Uh, I was making a joke about how they remember things. Right after Akash already made that joke, <laughs> so everybody at home, you can cover your ears like Miles did earlier in this podcast, and I'll never say a joke like that again. Um, um, uh, what else we got? We got uh, Elon Musk is bullying yeah, Bernie Sanders. Just dunking on Bernie. <laughs> Son. And threatening the stockholders, too. You know what? Okay. Okay. Ready? There, this is a uh, tweet. I forget who the fuck said it, but it wasn't. Uh, this is not my idea. Uh, so I'm not going to take credit for this. And, and if you know who tweeted this, just give them credit for it. My bad. I don't recall. But um, there's a guy tweeted this thing. He, he basically was talking about China. And he goes, uh, what? Uh, Germany did wrong where Hitler did wrong is he didn't make the world reliant on the German economy before World War II. That's the only thing he did wrong. Yeah. The only <laughs> yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. 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 Is that what you're saying? The <laughs> only yeah. issue. The only error in judgment. <laughs> in Hitler's judgment. Yeah. Yeah. No, I guess what he's saying is like in terms of like uh, Pure strategy, to eradicate yeah. the Jews, he goes, <laughs> it would have been easier if you made the whole world reliant on the German economy. Right. Uh, uh, the German economy because yeah. then they look the other way in the same way he goes this is what China did China yeah. made the whole world reliant on the Chinese economy or basically Chinese goods mm -hmm. yeah. so they, so now everybody looks the other way when they want to throw all the Muslims in a concentration camp when they want to just say hey Taiwan is about to be China Hong Kong is about to be China when they want to expand throughout Asia we look the other way because we're like well I don't want to fuck up my shit yeah. like you as an American got to start asking yourself like do we care, really care about Taiwan like yeah. <laughs> do we really care about Hong Kong yeah. How much do we really care about the South Asian Pacific? Yeah. Or whatever the fuck they keep trying to build islands in or do whatever. I guess in a way, America also did the same thing. 100%. Yeah. We, we, I'm sure we're the masters of it. Yeah. Um, but why would we hold ourselves accountable? You fucking sell out. <laughs> sell out Canadian. No. Um, and I brought this up in regards to Elon Musk. If you own Tesla, Elon can say whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. Before I owned Tesla, I was very critical of Elon. Mm -hmm. yeah. I bought Tesla and now I'm like, Bernie suck dicks, bro. <laughs> Why are you talking about my mans? Yeah. Don't let him sell more of the stock. My shit goes down when he sells the stuff. That's why I don't understand the criticism. People are like, oh, why do you uh, why do you defend billionaires? Like people would be like, why the billionaires don't care about you? What has a billionaire ever done for you? And you're like, maybe a thousand makes like, me money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, a little hundred <laughs> percent. If I'm investing that billionaire's company, if I'm investing in Amazon, Google, Apple, all these motherfuckers, they've done stuff for me. Yeah. Help mm -hmm. me fight inflation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. They, they, they care. They, Say went what? Up, they went public. They went on a stock market. Yes. Hey. It's a public offering. We are the public. Mm. Yeah. They do a lot for us. We mm. like it. Yeah. They send our kids to college, right? This is our kids college funds. This is our work. They help us retire. If yeah. you're invested, if you're invested, but you know what? Anybody could invest. It's not like they got a moat around investment. Well, nope. you have to spend money. That's true. <laughs> Tesla Stop buying Jordans. Always, yeah, but Tesla buy some Tesla. Tesla like, this wasn't is always expensive, bro. Say what? Tesla wasn't always expensive. Even if it's not, buy, buy a fraction of a share. Can you do that with a share? I don't think, he, I think it's not, it's not Bitcoin. Literally, the company that is on this podcast. Public. Public says you can buy fractions of a share. Oh, all right. I think you can. All right. Well, I'm a dumbass, guys. I don't know. All I'm saying <laughs> is, on whole shits. go out there. So now, what he did is he made the American public dependent on his success. Mm. Not completely dependent, but we want him to win because if he wins, we, we win. win. And right. that is a genius strategy. Right. Make sure that everybody's invested in your success. It's also, this is the energy you want from a billionaire unapologetic. Yeah. Let's not hide it. Somebody goes at billionaires and he just, go, I'm, I keep forgetting you're alive. I keep forgetting you're still alive. He doesn't say, That's what he said. Hey, these tax law, he doesn't do that Bezos shit where you like kind of skirt around it. Nah, you don't he address it. Dog. He went yeah, over he, the he's the portnoy of billionaires, dog. <laughs> yeah. That's what he is. You're explaining you're losing, you know, you just yeah. fire back. Yeah. Just fire back. We must demand <laughs> that the extremely wealthy pay their fair share. Which also is a very reasonable claim from so, Bernie's perspective. Yeah. <laughs> like, just like extremely like neutral he didn't even tweet him like you didn't tweet so, at him but how can you put respond Elon to that? in the tweet no yeah. he just said it he was just like yo and here's a neutral thing that i'm sure no one will yeah. be mad at Bernie's gone nobody wilder would than be that mad. In tweets. He's, Say what? he's gotten much wilder he adds you he don't even need neutral. a sub like he will come right at you yeah but no 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 Elon does anyone wasn't disagree having with that? Like, Say what? does anyone disagree with that elon <laughs> yeah dude the billionaires Elon's billionaires like, disagree hard as fuck elon about to be like i'm not paying no more taxes man 
So he just insults him for no reason. Elon is really <laughs> out here. Yeah, yeah. Dog. That motherfucker is really He's... out here. And I'll be honest, like, if we're keeping it a buck, just started making money. Wait, what do you mean? Tesla just started making money. Mm-hmm. Like, what, last quarter? They pandemic. Turned pandemic products, started. Profits or hard. something like that. Like, but most of their profits comes from, like, selling the... Um, they okay you have a certain amount of like eco-friendly credits Mm -hmm. and each car manufacturer needs to have enough of these credits either through their own fleet of cars or through purchasing them from other car manufacturers right so since all the teslas are very green obviously because they're not using no fucking gas they got all these credits to sell Mm -hmm. so all their money, I think like 70% of the money that they were making was coming from these credits, not actually from the cars. And for the first time recently, they started actually making money. So it's like Elon Musk is beefing with Jeff Bezos over like who's the number one guy. And it's like, I bet, I'm bet i sure it takes everything in Bezos's fucking power to not look at him and be like, hey, little boy, <laughs> little boy, you just started making money barely, little boy. <laughs> I print money, little boy. Well, how do you know he's just started making money? So it, you can look it up. It's like, I think within the last few quarters, uh, Tesla's actually turning a profit Tesla, based on the car, uh, not based on these credits. That is a government funded system. Mm. Right. Whereas like if you sell paper towels, that's cash. Mm-hmm. This motherfucker, Bezos, prints cash. Mm-hmm. But Amazon also wasn't profitable for a while. And By choice. Like, I, they're just dumping money back they're into really Amazon. expanding and like yeah, yeah. That's but the business yeah. itself is generating cash yeah right and also Amazon Web Services was generating so much f- fucking cash but that's cash mm-hmm. like motherfuckers just paying you dollars and then you have that money if you need Tesla is all speculative like if another fucking car company comes out that's better than Tesla at electric cars they got an electric car that goes 2,000 miles and doesn't look like a fucking Honda Accord <laughs> yo Tesla's dunk dunk mm. game over yeah so they, they, that's what I'm saying. Like, and we just love Elon so much that we're like engaged in this beef and we're like, Bezos is the bad guy. Fuck Bezos. Even though Bezos does way more for us. Yeah. Bezos is out there delivering shit to our fucking house. Yeah, but he's a cuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he's out there delivering shit to our house what within a, a day. Thing to do, and though. then he charges, he delivers food to our house. Delivers groceries yeah. so that we don't have to carry the fucking groceries or our girl don't have to carry the fucking groceries. Mm-hmm. And then they start charging $9.99 for it. And we're like, how the fuck dare you? I'm upset about this. Your car don't go 30 miles without a charge. Son, <laughs> I'm upset and about that And you still too. love that motherfucker. Because he's You can't funny, even dog. drive to Whole Foods and pick up your own because. fucking groceries <laughs> if you want it. He's, and then you know what? Bezos is like, I got you. Yeah, but Bezos. And you're still angry at Bezos, not Elon. Bezos not funny. Yeah, it matters. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it matter. matters, fam. Bezos not funny. Son, it matters. You remember what you said when money. you did that Leo tweet? You said, what'd you say? This is the first time I've ever liked Bezos. Yo, it's uh, true. Yeah. He was kind of funny. Invest in funny, dog. I'm yeah. saying, invest bro. Invest in fucking funny, man. It fucking matters. And Elon understands it. Elon knew that in order for him to have a successful business, he needed clout. Yep. He's the Jake Paul of automakers. <laughs> Okay, he Jake Paul knew if I'm going to be a pay-per-view boxer, I got to build this shit off of hype. I don't got to fight the best boxers. Yeah, this motherfucker wasn't fighting Ford. He wasn't fighting GM. He's not really going up against them. Right. This is speculative. He's selling emission credits. The Mm. guy ain't a car maker profitably. He's Mm. an emission credit guy. Mm. But he kept doing it enough. To where now he's doing pay-per-view events, and that's what the fuck Elon and is doing. Cars are making cars. money, and now the cars are making money. Fake it till you make it. And Tesla Solar is probably gonna make a lot of money when he has the solar panels for people's houses. For the houses, right? That's probably gonna make a lot of money. The guy bought time with funny, bro. Being a celebrity, we invested in him. Mm. We I, invested in him, not the company. Nobody knows the logistics of Tesla. You don't know jack shit. You didn't even know they didn't make money until two quarters ago. But you know that you like Elon Musk. You know that he's a genius. And you're investing in, in Elon Musk. And you know what? I did the same thing. Yep. People tell me he's a fraud all the time. He might be. Shut he's up. funny. I, I, do you think he's a fraud? I can't say. You don't think he's a fraud. I don't right? think he's a fraud. But I can't disprove it. Kind of like when you ask me why is Bitcoin going to make money. I can't. I don't know. I just know I like Elon Musk and I trust him because he's funny. You trust your gut. I trust my gut. My gut likes Elon. It's a fun yo. He be tickling my gut, bro. He be tickling <laughs> that gut. This is Elon Musk's net worth in 2011 was like 20 bill. Yeah. 
but that's based on stock evaluation. He is the uh, majority holder of Tesla stock. What was Remember, he, he, he got like PayPal took money. Investment. He had yeah, PayPal yeah. money. And he used the PayPal money, I think, to uh, start uh, SpaceX. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So he got this like crazy money for for PayPal, but that was like one of his like first, I guess, big ventures. Mm. And then he almost went broke put his own money up for SpaceX. The final rocket before he was about to go broke ends up going in the air. Of course, SpaceX explodes. His story is fascinating. Yeah. Like, there's an awesome motivational video you guys can watch on YouTube. The one that's got the Gangster's Paris, Paradise Oh, my God. You watch those? <laughs> oh, dude, I get geared up on them. Like, if I get, I get hyped to do something where he's about to cry and the little robot tears come out. He really uh, in the interview. These. Son, you didn't watch this? I'm going to watch there's it. There's so many of these types of videos. No, no, no. Like, this is the one. When he yeah. gets dogged by all, like, the real astronauts. And like Buzz heroes. All Lightyear or whatever the fuck like, Buzz All. It's never going to work. Yeah, it's he, never going to work. It's, I've been spending most of my life living in. And then Elon's like, yo, I'm going to do it. And then, like, he cried. my dick out. I was like, keep going with this shit. <laughs> Boy, that's what I invested. Most of my life living in. Again. Yeah, together we can go to space. And then that's, that's when you come. <laughs> keep going. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> I've seen there's so many That videos. rock is not the only thing blasting off. I'm telling you. Boy, it was out here, bro. I didn't know watch Oh, dude, it was so good. I watched it multiple times. Anytime I want to get charged up about I want to watch it. I'm going to watch it. Yeah, it. what's your motivational porn? Just down syndrome kids slapping their thighs, you fucking creep. Yeah, what's this guy doing? How do you get motivated, Mark? I listen to Bezos videos, dog. Yo. I do. He's like, yo, we're never going to well, come back to Earth. I just knew we could provide a service for people, and we could do it in a more cost-efficient way than everybody, then, then uh, that was our way to win. Keep going. What a cuck video, I'm dude. almost there, dog. Keep going. Yeah. What a cuck, dude. Bezos nah. is such a cuck. And he said we're going to live in space, and that's lit. You got to be honest, though. Yeah. Bezos's gift to people is far more helpful than Elon's. Yeah. In on the day to day basis, right, in, now, right now, absolutely. In the future, that might change yes. if we don't, uh, if we aren't relying on fossil fuels anymore, and yeah. if we need to go to space and live out there. Like well, Bezos might Bezos. take us to space anyway. Son, what is? Did you read this at all? Yeah. Okay, break this down. So uh, he's just speaking. I don't know if he's necessarily speaking like gospel. You know what I mean? I don't know if he's like, yo, this is a definitely what's going to happen. But yeah, he's just yeah. sort of like conjecturing about what the future. And I could don't look know like. if he's saying his Blue Origin is going to do this. Well, he yeah. said like that's sort of like the mission and like kind of where we would like to see things go eventually quick, one day. I just want to say the Love fit up. is fire and shouts to Kid Super. Yeah, this, this, is, this, this is, is fire. This is, yeah. this is the that new drop. This is the new drop. That is fire. He'll hook you son. up. I need to talk to, to Colm. Yeah. <laughs> Colm, who spells his name C-O-L-M. Yeah. It's Irish. This is your people. You should know that. But no, he's Scottish, Colm. yo. I'm Scottish, son. Don't do it. Don't do it, Mark. Don't do it. Don't you do guys it. are neighbors, hey, dog. Hey, dog. That's Florida hey, and Georgia. That's, hey, like, that's hey, the same dog. shit. Hey, dog. Don't do that. That's disrespectful. That's, that's, that's like calling country. me a, that's hey, like calling me a Pakistani, Pakistan, Pakistan, dog. India, same country, bro? Well, yeah, no, come on. they're different come countries. <laughs> bro, come Fuck, on. Fuck, he's right, uh, dude. We true, are part of the same guy. He got you, dog. You see what he fucking did right there? Damn, he's white devils. Damn, a little geographical nerd over there. Shit. Okay. Keep talking. Keep talking about that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep talking about that shit. You know what I mean? All right. So basically, he's like. Uh, yeah. All right, we're going to just go to Earth to visit. Shout out to Miles, dressed like Miss Mary Mack over there. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker out here looking cute. So Miles, he looking cute today. Yeah. That little cardigan with the roll up. Yeah. Yo, that motherfucker is cute. Yeah. Pour me a hot toddy. Let me sit by the fire with Miles. Yo, this motherfucker adorable, dog. Okay, go, go. Hit this all shit. Right, so he said, shit. yo, we're all going to just live in space. Yeah. Most people are going to be born in space. Space is going to be their home. We're going to have like centrifuges that create gravity where you can just kind of live on your little spaceship yep. and walk around like regular. Like that, that is a that is a cool thing that they showed in Interstellar. Did you see that movie? No, I never seen it. So the way that they created the gravity, they showed it in a couple of these space movies is they have the, the, the space station itself spinning fast enough where it produces enough centripetal force or centrifugal? Centrifugal. Centrifugal or centripetal. One of those, enough force where you're being pushed to the ground. Mm. Whoa. And that's essentially... It almost feels like uh, the opposite of what should happen for us. Like, shouldn't we be like flying off? I don't know how this shit works, though. Son, son, there's no backup for that. If that one of them shits breaks, we all just floating exactly. into the fucking ether. That is the tricky thing. But it kind of cool idea conceptually, right? Like, like uh, I'm trying to think of something like um, <sighs> you're swinging like a chainmail. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know that like ancient Scottish weapon that's super yeah. sick? So it's yeah, an yeah, ancient yeah. weapon that a lot yeah. of people use, yeah. It was a Scottish weapon. Yeah. We yeah. use it the best. Yeah. <laughs> Who else use it? What did the French use it for? To sit on? <laughs> you guys just rub your fucking clits on it during war? Is that what you guys did? Just share that? Just go ass to ass in some chain mail? Um, but, <laughs> right? Just Jonah Ark just fucking diddled. <laughs> Diddling away. Uh, but, yeah, just like, you know, when you're swinging like that and all the pressure is going to the outside. Right. Well, what if you built society on the inside, inside of, the of a circle? Yeah. Right. And they're swinging like that or spinning like that. Yep. Your feet would be pressed. Yeah. To... It's like the fucking tilt a world. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's the example. Perfect yeah. example. Yeah. So I don't know how the fuck that they can make it like normal to walk around because that tilt a world shit feels weird. Yeah. yeah. But that's what Bezos said they're going to do. And then we're just going to visit Earth like it's uh, like a vacation. Like Yellowstone. Yeah. Like Westworld, but Earth. Okay. Do you believe it? And what do you think timeline is? I don't know. I'm almost like, why do you want that to happen? That's what I'm saying. Okay. I guess we, he's just thinking we're going to fuck up Earth so bad, or... But who's we? Yeah. Who are the people that are fucking up Earth? Not, hey. Yeah. That's true. We're very green on this podcast. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We're the we're greenest a, podcast. An eco-friendly podcast. Yeah. But, but uh, who's fucking up Earth? I, us, I think. Yeah, it's, it's definitely us. It's definitely are we all fucking humans. up Earth? This I podcast, think Earth looks the same, This podcast like, has done very does little. Does Earth look different than when you were younger? No. Nah. I think it does. How though? Like if you look at a map, I think it's it's more blue. Probably. Ice melts, he, he always bro. Brings up maps, bro. Stop with the yeah, maps. Yeah. Ice melts. I think there's more water. I think ice is melting in a way. Ain't that it no should. more bro, water. Dog. Human beings are seventy percent water. We need that shit. Yeah. 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 He doesn't know anything about water. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, that's a good point. Humans. Are 70% also, why water? are we drinking that shit? Right. Like if the uh, if the ice caps are melting, the polar ice caps are melting. Put a little thing down there. Yeah. Like before it goes into the water, the mm-hmm. salt water to make it all salty, put a little uh, bin. Yeah. Right? Like you put a little bin right there. That's all the water. We're going to drink it. We're going to pee it out. Mm-hmm. Right? Water cycle. That's it. Like I literally, I don't see this as a problem. How the fuck is it possible? And I mean this sincerely. How the fuck is it possible that you have all these videos coming out talking about the next great crisis is what, Mark? Uh, Climate change. Cl- is it climate change? Water. Oh, water. Yeah, Remember, yeah. Nestle's buying up all the water. Have you guys seen these oh, yeah, like yeah. Uh, videos? On. I think even Jake Tram maybe did one. Yeah, yeah. And it's like Nestle, the company that we know for chocolate, yeah. is really just uh, a corporation like anyone else, and they're buying up all these like water. Uh, it's not. They're not called reservoirs, but they're buying up land that have like water suppositories underneath the land. They're called yeah. aquifers. Aquifers. Aqu- Aquifer. Yeah. Yes. Holy shit. Good. That's great. You guys got that. Nice. So. Uh, yeah, that was fucking awesome, guys. So they're <laughs> buying up the land that have these aquifers, right? So yeah. that they can extract that water, right? And they're going to basically own all the water. And then when we uh, allegedly we're going to run out of water, and that's a big issue. And people are talking about like the desalination process. Like, oh, we could just take all the salt water from the Apparently ocean. Apparently we figured out how to do that. Yeah, and we can. We can. It's just very costly <laughs> and it takes a lot of time. Israel's yeah. number one in the world for that. Continue. They figure that out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Why? It's because you have that water that you can't uh, sink in? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? They just had to figure the out a way sea. to drink the Dead Sea. Yeah, Wait, but it's maybe. not that hard, though. You just have it evaporate. What's that? The water. Like salt water. You just have it evaporate, then you can drink it. <laughs> what are you talking what about? You, what's happening right now? If it now? evaporates, how the fuck can you drink it? Yeah. Because that's how you do water if like, you're on a boat. Mark, if it's evaporated. Yeah, but then you have a tent to catch it, and then you drink the water that's caught that's in the tent. That's how you do it. If you were trapped on a de- deserted island... That's the only way to get fresh water. Bro, you, is bro, 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 where like you think that you understand how water or cast no, away I did this or before. cast away I did, I did this cast away condensation bro yeah, yeah that's not science. evaporation that's condensation condensation well it becomes condensation no, it, nah 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 it don't. Uh, it don't it don't it don't it don't how it does don't. it condensate it goes, I don't even know what you're up. trying to say I swear to god I don't even bro, know what you're you trying to salt say water you in boil the salt water the steam goes on like a palm frond if you're on an island and then that water on top of there will be fresh <laughs> And that's how we're going to feed our society when, no, when everything you don't. sinks. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, you oh, don't need God. to go through all that process to go get the salt water. If we know the glaciers are melting, are they not melting, Miles? You look like you do expeditions. <laughs> yeah, <no>. Miles. <laughs> He's dressed like an NPR host. He's Yo, going he really is. Yo, where's your red beanie, Bill Murray? <laughs> okay. So if we know for a fact that we're running out of water, right? Yeah. Yeah, you got one group of these environmentalist motherfuckers talking about we're running out of water. Uh-huh. We got another group of these environmentalist motherfuckers talking about the polar ice caps are melting. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Problem solved. Yeah, we fixed it. You're welcome. Done. Yep. Yo. Do you not see this? Yep. I just solved global warming. The water 
is gone. Yeah. Nestle thinks that they got the monopoly on the water. Dumbasses. Ha! Don't know. Ha! They don't know. Ha! They don't know. Okay. Okay. So what are you casting the water with? I don't know, but I think if I'm Hershey, I'm going up to the polar ice caps. Oh, with a little canopy? Wars? Yeah, we're going to have a little chocolate wars. Yeah. And you go up there, you take some buckets, uh -huh. you take something, and you start chopping away at those motherfucking glaciers. Because uh -huh. what's happening right now? Them glaciers are falling into the water, landing on polar bears, polar bears dying. Yeah. Seals are also dying. Uh -huh. We could take that valuable glacial ice. Yeah. Okay? And instead of just letting it be in the fucking water where it melts and it just turns into more salt water, it's a problem for everybody. Nobody likes salt water. Mm -mm, that's okay? my least favorite water. That's the worst water. Yeah, yeah. Okay? That and Evian. Yeah. Thanks to your people. Well, no, Evian, they get that from the mountains. That's the problem. From the Alps. Though. Wait, glacier water is fresh water. Yes, you fucking retard. I actually don't know if that's true. How the hell could it freeze? Well, I actually don't know if, if that's true. If it has true. salt in it, dude. Well, I actually don't know. Of course it's true. But I think if you put well, salt how, water how? in it a It starts freezer. at the top of the fucking mountain. So Where's put, it going to get the salt? If you put salt water... The glacier water, goes from top of the mountain down into the water. But iceberg, iceberg's just in the water floating. Bam! An iceberg is a part of the glacier that broke off. So iceberg isn't ice... Or isn't salt? No! Isn't that a little bit? You don't think? Just sticking to it? Son, No! So Man. what water melted you want, to Just make, take the top of it. How did the glacier form? Say what? How did the glacier form? It didn't form from, from rain, the ocean man. water? No, rain. it came from the top of the mountain. It came from the top of the mountain and the fucking rivers and shit. Rain, bruh. Mm. Rain. How did you not know this? I didn't know this. I, I can't believe I'm surrounded by such incompetence. Over there, yeah. please. You know about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. Why are you not talking, Dove? Because I'm Googling it to make, sure. to make sure that we're right. I mean, yeah, icebergs float in the ocean, but they're made of frozen fresh water, not salt water. Yeah. Duh! Oh, you didn't Yo, know that, though? Can I, mean, I be I honest? Did, but I guess I thought like other ice would freeze to it. I thought a little bit of salt in no. the water would freeze. Salt water, very difficult to but freeze. But it's so cold. Friend. Eventually, very, very, very salt water to does freeze. not freeze because it has this salt. Eventually, if it's at zero Kelvin, it'll freeze. No. Even Kelvin won't freeze it. <laughs> Kelvin can freeze it. Nah, Kelvin don't do that shit. Yeah, I don't, don't think you Kelvin can saying, freeze it, bro. Kelvin is Who is Kel Kelvin's that cold ass black guy? Is that he, he <laughs> yeah. just come around freezing shit? <laughs> yeah. No, for real. Kelvin, Remember maybe if you get to Kelvin, that works. Yeah. Oh. Kelvin. I'm just saying. Kelvin. I'm just saying this is a fact. We have a water issue over here and we have a water solution over here, but nobody is taking advantage of it. Mm. Chop away at the fucking glaciers. What do glaciers even do? They do nothing. Almost it's just nothing. for rich people to go look at. They mm -hmm. actually serve no fucking environmental purpose. Where do the purpose. polar bears live? On these stupid ice caps. You think they want to live there? You think, nah. a you think a fucking polar bear knows it's an ice cap? No, they're They pissed. don't know it's an ice cap till it's in the middle of the goddamn ocean, yeah. right? And just chilling there like, what the fuck? How the fuck I got here? Yeah, they they thought it shit. was land. Yeah, mm. they want to be fucking snowboarding, drinking coke. They don't want to be how sitting are we gonna ice. Get the, how are we going to get the ice to wherever it's going? Say what? You, you keep it in buckets. We just fly mad buckets back hey, and forth. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. You float it. Yeah, it's already in the water. It's dog. in the water. Put a sail on it. Just push the shit. Matter of fact, I think it was Saudi Arabia or, or one of the countries out there yeah. um, uh, that tried to chop off a section of a, an iceberg mm -hmm. or uh, a glacier and then literally tug it to Saudi Arabia so they could have fresh water. Mm. You can look that up. But this was a... Did it work? I think that shit melted, bro. But it's hot out yeah, there in the desert. Hot. Dog, it's it's really hot, hot out there in the, the desert. desert yeah, you know I mean? That's a like lot. Boiling hot. That's a lot. Or yeah. they didn't take a big enough piece. Take a bigger piece. You don't got to get it. Actually, uh, uh, got you. You yeah. don't got to bring that shit all the way back to Saudi Arabia. Bring that back to Nova Scotia. Let it melt Process a it there when it's still cold. Mm. Mm. Yeah, someone from the UAE. UAE. Mm -hmm. Done. And what? It was just a guy that did it or the, the government? The government. It well, was just, an idea, but desalination salinization is probably the easier no, idea. No, no. Desalinization doesn't stop the water. We we have an issue with too much water and too little water. Yeah. The, he's saying These the ice caps are killing itself. the polar bears because they're breaking off. Bro. I don't care about the polar bears, I'll be honest with you, but the seals. it's an added it's the benefit. Seals. The seals. That's an added benefit. Mm. Penguins. None of them want to be on no fucking ice cap, dog. No. Ice uh. caps stink. Only where do we, cause problems. Where do we relocate them? What? Where do we relocate them? Relocate who? Penguins, polar bears. To the land. They had like the penguins that go on the sand. We're good. They, they're, yo, they're yo, 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 yo. Animals are resilient, fam. And if, if, a, if a polar bear could find its way into a garbage can, it could find its way onto some fucking land. You know, we, you know how we could get them to different parts of the land is we could um, take all the cubs from one polar bear and then when the mother cub starts chasing you, the mother bear starts chasing you, you drop one at a time and then you get them wherever you need to go eventually. You think polar bears are going to be chasing their cubs? 
That is a fucking genius idea. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought of it. That is an so absolutely I just thought of it. genius idea. I don't know how, idea. but I just thought of it. Holy shit. And I then know. you raise those polar bear cubs in captivity. Yeah. And then when they're badass enough, then you can like fight them or do, you know, yeah, yeah, cool yeah. events with them. Yeah. Fuck, man. You're brilliant. I didn't brilliant. even think about that. That's a good idea. You are absolutely this brilliant. Genius. I'm, a, I'm an innovator. Anyway, I solved the environmental uh, crisis. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah I appreciate you're welcome. that. You still People believe the earth idiots. is heating up or not? Um, How do we know it's the earth's fault? Well, it's not the earth's fault. It's how our do, fault. How do we know it's our fault? We don't know that. How do we not know it's just the sun's fault? I would blame the sun. Where's all the heat coming from? Come huh. from the sun. So that's but they're day. also huh. trying to say that there's an ozone layer that's being depleted because of all the chlorofluorocarbons that we're using. And that sounds CFCs. like the sun's problem, bro. That's right. Yeah, CFCs. yeah, we put that together, buddy. We, we abbreviated that after he said it. <laughs> yeah, that sounds yeah, like yeah, the sun's yeah, problem, yeah. dude. <laughs> nah, that is the sun's problem, but like... Okay, so it gets a little hotter. What's the big deal? Well, then everything what? melts, then we all get super hot. What if tired. you just went up there with aluminum foil? Keep yeah. going. It's a very reflective surface. Yeah. Aluminum uh, foil is just going to reflect all the sunlight back. Yeah. Now it actually might even be global cooling. No, but then you might make space too hot. Son, I got an idea. I, I saw this shit right now. Y'all right. ready? Yeah, go hmm. ahead. It's light. Yeah, it's the sun. It's light. The sun makes light. Hmm. How did the dinosaurs go extinct? Oh, meteor shower. Meteor, not shower. A uh, bath? Asteroid? <laughs> what is it? Asteroid. A oh, meteor me hit oh, the right. Earth. Okay, yeah. Right there by the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? The dust cloud caused by the meteor blocked the sun mm. for what? Wow. A million years or Made something like that? Made the ice age. Mm -hmm. Made the ice. There's no sun, bro. There's no sun. Everything's cool. Smaller meteor. Oh, like a little one. Little meteor in the places... Where there's ozone depletion. Control meteorite. Control meteor. Yeah. Send some dust up in there. Dust works. Yeah. Dust blocks the sun. Yeah. Get some dust up in there. Make it a little more winter. A little bit more winter. Not too much dust. And then do it incrementally. Mm. I don't believe that. Dust? How long dust lasts? Son, dust be lasting. Boy. Dust yes. don't last that long, dog. That should be settling mad quick. Son, nah. But dust, though? Dust. Like, that's... You ever go to an old thing? Full of dust. Yeah, it's dust. Yeah, but, dust but it's, that's because dust settles. It comes down. Yeah. That's exact. Dust not in the fucking, it's not on the roof. You Bro, don't dust know that. is everywhere. You don't dust see it. Dust is all over, dog. Yeah, dust be settling, dog. It cannot possibly block the sun for long enough to cause a motherfucking ice age. So what happened? That's dog? wild, dog. What happened? I don't know, but I don't believe it's dust. Why not? Son, it was radioactivity from the meteor, like the way fucking. You're talking about uh, radioactivity. Yeah, the way fucking the nukes fucked up Japan for mad long. Decades of kids coming out. Look at ugly shit. Where's the radioactive material on on uh, meteor? Son, it's mad. Have you not seen Meteor Man? He gets hit by a meteor and he gets mad radioactive powers. I didn't see that. I never Son, saw that. You guys I... don't know about Robert Townsend? I've never heard of that dog. That's a black superhero. You guys uh, probably, well, you know what I mean? I don't know as woke as me. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I don't he touched know, the Jet dog. Magazine and knew everybody that was in it in 30 X. seconds. <laughs> it was really it was incredible. I'm, I'm just saying, I, I think there might be one fundamental flaw in your idea. Yeah. I think the fundamental flaw is dust, bro. A dust caused an ice age. Let me think, bro. I kind of believe in dust. That I dust bowl the fucked up the, uh, the Oklahoma for like 10 years. Maybe yeah, it yep. caused no goddamn ice age. They just they couldn't Miles, grow crops. You have something to say, I can tell. When Mount St. Helens like exploded, there was a bunch of like dust and ash uh -huh. in the sky. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was known yep. one of the most dust yep. ever. Yep, keep a going, lot of keep tons going. Of dust. It made that whole area like that it went over cooler by like 10 degrees. For, for how long? I don't know, a couple days, weeks. That's what I'm saying. A couple weeks, no, couple that's days. One that's, that's a one tiny volcano. little. That's a if volcano, the, if the whole yo. Thing went dark, I'm gonna yeah. push back a little bit on that. What year is this? This is Mount Vesuvius. No, um, no, Mount St. Helens, 1984. Yeah, it's like Helen. the 80s. I'm 80s. sorry. Vesuvius. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cover Pompeii. Yeah, I thought they was talking about that. So what? I was about to be like, Cap, yo, how they know what's 10 degrees colder? <laughs> For the back 80s. Then. But yeah. they weren't, you know, recording degrees. So, and that's a whole ass volcano that made that one exact we area. Which that was just a tiny is. little little one. <laughs> yeah, you know it could be like twelve. It could be the first eighty. Yeah, like it could just be come on, bro. Mount St. Helen was a tiny volcano. We read about a, that in history books. That was a big ass volcano. What, what, it was just what, a what? tiny little part of a massive. It was a medium size. It was called Dara. That's under Yellowstone. If Yellowstone goes, the whole. I've heard goes. this. Yeah. I've heard if Yellowstone goes, we're all fucked. Cap. Why? Because it's oh, just you, dust? You stronger than... Not because it's just dust, but I just don't think if if you don't want to blow, you don't got to let it blow. <laughs> yeah. Just like when you blow your nose and you hold it. Yeah. Why don't they let it a little bit out? then it builds up and then something's got to happen. They something can let a little give. bit out. Yeah, you just let a little out at a time, dog. Like, 
have a little side hole you put What in. if we make the hole in Old Faithful mad big and then more comes out at a time? That would to his point. That lets out help. a little more pressure quicker. That would probably help a little. Yeah. Yeah. What's the name of that shit underneath the earth, Miles? A volcano. No, the Ma- magma? No, the terra or something? What'd you call it? Oh, the terra firma. <laughs> oh, super caldera. A super, super caldera. caldera. Yeah. yeah. And that's the name of it. Yeah. Well, that's any of them. That's just like a large uh, pent up mass of of magma. Of magma? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Magma. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because uh, we got to make sure that you're listening to this podcast in the right way. Okay. And if you got the headphones, if you got the headphones on, we got to make sure you're using the right headphone company. All right. And we're not, and we got to make sure that you're not burning holes in your pockets while you're doing it. Now, Akash, what do you think the best value is right now in the headphone space? Oh, probably the headphones I brought here. Oh, Raycons. Really? What you got? Son, if I'm getting on the train, I throw on these Raycons. And if I lose them, they're half the price of the regular ones. I buy another one. Wow. Bang. But what's the battery life, though? That's the thing. A lot of times these like uh, these little pods, they fuck up. They Son. don't have good battery life. Dumb long. Maybe the longest of any year pod I've used. Maybe. I'm not really? sure, but maybe. Really? Dumb long. Like, what are we talking about? Son, the first day I got them, they, when they came to me, they're not fully charged. I got them out the box, moved my whole ass apartment, listening to podcasts the whole time. Wow. I heard they got eight hours of playtime and 32 hour battery life, which is absolutely fucking Makes sense. insane. I'm just saying the Raycons are stacked. Okay. Half the price of the competitors, same great audio quality, amazing battery life. This is an absolute no brainer. Okay. You got to go with the Raycons. And if you want to get them right now, you can get 20% off if you go to buy Raycon. That's R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash flagrant. Okay. You're going to unlock exclusive deals up to 20% off of your Raycon order. Okay. If you go to buy Raycon dot com slash flagrant, but hurry because the author is available for a limited time only, and you don't want to miss it. That's buyraycon.com slash flagrant to unlock up to 20% off your Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash flagrant. Now let's get back to the show. All right, and we back. Um, I think it's time for Feelings No Facts. Mark. Hit it. Yeah, we got a couple. So we just took a pee break, and that uh, made me remember oh, yeah. this story that happened. Actually, oh, just over the weekend. It was in Daytona, which I didn't realize. When I first saw the video, I thought it was fucking Siberia or something. I did not think it was in America. Yeah. It was like down the street from where I grew up. So, yeah. uh, No, that makes sense. Shocking. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. no, that's what I would have guessed. Actually. So basically... I'm surprised it's not your face. Yeah. <laughs> so this band, Brass Against, is uh, they're doing a cover of Rage Against the Machine. And... They're on stage, and all of a sudden, this one brings a guy up on stage, and this is what happens. So she signals to a guy in the crowd, like points to him, and is basically like, yo, get up on stage. Everyone starts cheering. He's got a beer can, I think, like stuck to his head through like suction, basically. Like, you ever seen someone do that? Oh, yeah. They take like an empty beer can and like stick it to their forehead. So he jumps up on stage. Immediately, she's like, yo, lay down. He assumes the position, like, pretty freely. Whoa, 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 whoa. I've never seen the video. I know of what happens, but this is wild. She's just pulling her pants all the way down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, All right. Yo! Yo, the way girls piss is crazy, dog. (laughs) Son, it's absurd, right? (laughs) Just spat it out, too. Yeah, so some guy in his mouth, he like spits it out. She's still singing, which is impressive. So everyone else is just kind of going crazy. He seems like he enjoyed it. Guy gets up, like. He throws, throws into the crowd. She's oh. telling him to get the fuck off the stage. And then, uh, yeah, they resume the rest of the concert. So <laughs> they took to their Twitter the next day and said, uh, we had a great time last night uh, welcome at the Welcome to Rockville. Sophia got carried away. That's not something the rest <laughs> of us expected. You know what her last name is? 
What? Urista. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's great. <laughs> like a barista? Yeah, yeah but for urine. urine. Yeah. So she does this. She, she gave him a shot. People. She gave yeah. him a double. Well, they said this is not what we were expecting, and it's not something you'll see again at our shows. Thanks for bringing it last night, Dave. No, nah, listen. Nah. If you're not, if somebody does some shit like that and you're not expecting it, you think you keep playing music? <laughs> you the pee girl now, dog. <laughs> That's your thing. You got to pee every single time. And you can tell some people knew it was coming because the trumpet dude like moved all his shit back. Oh, really? Yeah, like, if you watch it, like she brings the guy up on stage and all of a sudden he starts moving stuff back slow. So the guitar guy's still jumping around. Ain't no way I'm jumping around if there's piss nearby. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't yeah. know. Can you imagine you go on stage at the end of your show and then one of the people just takes a piss? I mean, can you imagine like learning how to play a brass instrument your whole life and then getting in a band with this girl? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you, pl- this is all brass. Brass Against is the name. Yeah, of the band, I'm so. assuming they do covers of Rage Against the Machine. Brass Against the Machine is yeah, what I was thinking. They are a cover yeah. band. But you so don't call a cover it- band, but it's like, think about it, like, you're playing the trombone. You're playing the trumpet. Like these are all like kind yeah, of like you dignified. were first chair. You were first chair. Yeah. Like your county's like fucking band group. Yeah. Like you thought that you were going to be playing at Lincoln Center. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'll join the Philharmonic one. Day. Yes. <laughs> wow. No, you won't. No. <laughs> you are going to be background music for when this girl takes a piss on a fat guy's forehead. <laughs> yeah. This is unbelievable, man. That yeah. trombone guy doesn't even seem to be looking at them. Yeah, he is. Or, he's pointing. He's like, he's, what the but he fuck seems is like he's pointing on? not at her. It seems like he's pointing yeah, he's at somebody else. Security. Like, can you get a bathroom for this girl please anything the craziest thing is she keeps singing yeah i think i heard a shot yeah it's just wild it's extremely metal for a cover also yeah (laughs) like it's not your song i'm gone i'll go she's good if that was her shtick and then she would pee on people oh this is the the best pr dude this worked for fucking ozzy osbourne biting heads off bats (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 100 this is great pr this band is something now yeah yeah but they still are just doing covers I mean, like, who is this guy, dude? She getting is pissed on. Yeah. <laughs> getting pissed on by a cover band? Do you think yeah. he knew? That's like letting the feature act shit on your face. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> There's a can on his forehead for a reason. And her name is something Eurista. Yeah. yeah. So this has to be something they've done before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He must know the deal, right? Like, yeah. There's no way you get peed on and you're just like, stay there. I think he was asking for it. I think he brought the can as like, hey, pee in this. Yeah, I'm the pee guy. And then she's a girl, uh, so she, they just can't. <laughs> they just can't aim at all. Like that was the first time I think I've seen a girl piss in profile. Like usually I'll see it, you know, like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never seen profile and you don't realize how much it splatters like that. Yeah. Like, it's it insane. comes out like it's a, a car It's like a water park where they have the water just open yeah. up. It's, it's all comes out at once. It's crazy. It's really unbelievable. Yeah. I, I just so inefficient. It's like a touchless car wash. It just yeah. goes yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Just dumps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just dumps. Wait, why do you think it's inefficient? I feel like it's more efficient. When guys pee, it takes so long. You pee for an hour. Yeah, because it's targeted. Yeah, it's just in a little stream. Yeah. It's just going. Like, this th- just seems like it could be so much more messy. It's just more messy. More your thighs yo. and legs. Like, yeah. You don't want to smell like pee. That's not going to be beneficial for you back in the day. Right? You need. It's already hard enough to keep your pussy, like, have no bugs in it. You don't want to have <laughs> fucking piss all over your legs and thighs. But you got to run if you're living back in the day and, like, people are trying to get you. Especially if you're a woman, you're vulnerable. Yeah. And you're exposed. Oh, you can't be peeing for too long. You only got six seconds. Good point. You got six seconds. Good you're out, point. You're out in the woods. You're just going to get fucking taken. That's right. Just get it all out. Yeah. Just oh one dump. Oh, my God, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah, just... but if you're running and you got a dick, you could just piss, kind of just aim it as you're running. You know what I mean? Just I can't like... start a piss while moving. I can do. I have to stop to, to get it going. Yeah, but then once it's and going, then... you're good money. Yeah, yeah, piss and run. True. They can't do that. Yeah, they can't. Though I doubt that you can piss when you're like in like flight mode. That yeah. was impressive. Peeing in front of that many people, having your pussy lips all out, like... Also Pussy singing lips are out and singing. And it's cold too, like on stage, like you're all hot and all of a sudden you take your pants off. Doing a squat. That's probably actually a relief. The pants off is probably like, oh, it's nice. Get a little hair, <laughs> a little ventilation. This is fucking wild. And they're going to, they're, yo, they're about to sell tickets like Tim Dillon. Yeah. <laughs> is it a, is it a, a cover band? Is, I mean, is that legal? What, what to what, sing other to people's be a music? Cover band, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you can like sell tickets. To that? Are you yeah. just now questioning the legality of something we've all seen a thousand times in person? I've never s- paid money for it. I thought yeah, that but... it's like um, a novelty. You know what I mean? Like uh, they just like to do it. You do it for yourself. But like selling tickets and you just play someone else's music the whole time, it feels like. If they're still live, I'm always like, that's a little weird. Wait, but you're getting married next month, where they're gonna play like some popular songs, right? Yeah, you yeah, have a yeah. band stop or a DJ? Snitching, stop, 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 stop. We got a band. Yeah, come on, chill. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he didn't get the DJ only. He yeah, got the band. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I guess, I guess it is. 
Yeah, I guess it does happen. That's right. It does happen. I, I don't know. For some reason, there's something weird about like playing just one band's songs. It's a little Because that band me. already exists. Yeah. Well, if they're it's dead, one. though, if they do like if they got his prince, he's like, yo, I'm a prince guy. I'm a prince cover guy. And there's a rule with that. I think once you've been dead for like five years, your music catalog becomes like open source. But what, also, no, we just do Prince nah, Hologram. I, I don't know that's true. There's so, or no, 50 years. I don't know. Maybe it's like like Beethoven, for example. You can just use Beethoven now. There's a life. Yeah, but anyone can play Beethoven anytime. No, you right? can use it in a commercial. You can use right, it in like yeah, yeah. there's a life. There's a life expectancy to. Oh no, that's right. We were having this conversation because I think like Disney's about yeah, to run out of their thing. And they they take their thing it. down all the time. Yeah, Disney litigates against it. Seventy years after the author's death, ninety-five years after publication. But it used to be less before Disney got in. It was like five years. Law. Yeah, and then it was up to twenty-five, then fifty, and like they just keep on mm. litigating and kicking it down. Have you ever heard of the Red Hot Chili Pipers? No. Yeah, They're, I don't uh, think they only do. We uh, don't think this is weird at all. No. Nah. Like you can just. Make money off of someone else's art if they're not false not advertising. At which all? weirdly enough, a lot of musicians don't write their own songs, though. But the people that are being paid, to write their songs <laughs> but the guys, money. yeah, but the guys making the money off another guy writing his music in that kind but of that's weird? clearly not the argument that I'm making. But in that, that also getting compensated for that music, he's a, he's making the most money. He's making the publishing on that music, and every time that music gets played on the radio, he's making money off of it. But these people are touring and making a living off of someone else's artwork. You don't even know if you give them permission to even do that. Like a DJ, though, too? I actually think it's less weird if it's live only. As long as it's... DJ, a, if... Go, go. If it's not false advertising, it's fine. If it's like, yo, I do other people's music and I cover, I think you can do that with anything. If someone wants to take your material and be like, yo, I'm going to do Andrew Schultz's jokes, but I'm just an impersonator. I'm not actually him. And they sell tickets to it. Run it. Seems weird, dude. You, you think Rage Against the Machine wants to get back together to do a 100-person venue in Daytona? And have to pee on some guy's face? Yeah. yeah. You think Tom Morello wants to pee on someone? I don't know. You, you don't, you don't, it doesn't feel like there should be like some sort of handshake or permission granted. Like Music is also weird like that because it's built on covers. And like when you start, you just do someone else's shit. Because, yeah, your shit is so whack. <laughs> you don't like even have shit. Someone yeah. do it, no, but even that, like seeing someone do their own song, it's just like... <laughs> But uh, yeah, no. There's a woman actually in like uh, like Netherlands or something. They got sued by Tina Turner because hmm. she looks so much like her, and she was promoting her thing as like Tina Turner Live or whatever. And people thought it was actually Tina Turner. That's illegal. Yeah, that's like, illegal. If you name a company close to another person's and that confuses the likeness rights. Yeah. Right. Interesting. This, yeah, this yeah. is the Red Hot Chili Peppers thing I was bringing up. It's a bagpipe cover of Red Hot Chili Peppers, and there's tweets all the time that are like. Yo, guy, I scored some cheap tickets to Red Hot Chili Peppers. And then they go, and it's a bagpipe cover. Oh. That's on you, though. The name's different. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. I mean, I don't think they're actually falsely selling that. I just think it's a funny like, sort of coincidence. But yeah, yeah it's sort of that likeness. It gets close. I don't know. It just feels weird. It feels icky. It's like, it feels like you need to have a conversation with the band and then get their blessing. Also, most cover bands, Do I don't think. you know what kind of paperwork that is around <laughs> the world? Like, it's not I that. think the bands are like, you're doing venues I would never do. And the people who are seeing you aren't like, oh, I saw the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I don't need to go see the Red Hot Chili Peppers when they come. No. Yeah. I think you still make your money. So you're like, I don't give yeah. a fuck. Because like when a cover happens within music, that's it. There's just not enough money for them to care. That's the reason. It's not a music thing. It's just there's not enough money for them to care. Because please believe if one of these cover bands got popping. Yeah. But what's they'd the, be asking there for There are money. cover bands that pop though. But, but not they also this, usually. Well, one, one point I just want to make is that whenever an artist uses another artist's beat and rhyme scheme. For example, they do a cover of another one of these songs, like a Drake song or something like that. They have to, if they're selling that, pay them the publishing. Mm -hmm. The only way that they can put that song out is if they're not profiting off mm -hmm. of that song, profiting off of that song. Mm -hmm. Maybe they could play it at their concerts, but if they're actually trying to make significant money off that song, they would have to pay everybody who's involved in the stealing of that or like the utilization of that music. All the publishing they would have yeah. to pay. Yeah. yeah. So what the issue with the cover band shit is, it's not whether it's wrong or right. It's just they don't make enough money for the band to. It's not worth worrying about. No, you were saying there's an example. No, to you. I mean, yeah, I think like Grateful Dead is a bunch of like cover bands that like are famous. That like Deadheads will also go to like their festivals too, and like they'll do like these little micro festivals and shit. I know the Grateful Dead is touring with John Mayer right now, but that's yeah. the actual band. Though. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Like it's completely like offshoot. That does wow. like their own covers and like they'll like do mashups and shit. But also a lot of cover bands don't only do yeah they'll do one band. So uh, like uh, in LA. yeah a Blink One Eight Two uh, cover band will do a lot of Blink. That. Remember that? Yeah. Best Sunday night. Yeah, but then they'll also do like Green Day and they'll do like a bunch of other shit. 
But like, so they'll yeah. do like that generation of that era in music. Yeah. I and truly like, don't get going to watch a cover band. There was uh, one. No, I saw one. It was, it was like fire. they were incredible. They did all they the covers. Really they they wore neck braces like they were nerds. They yeah. had so many porn like they star were nerds. fans. <laughs> no, no, they were dope. Yeah, like yeah, you yeah. would see them without this gear, like they're looking like Revenge of the Nerds. But the hottest girls, proper Sunday. I don't know, just fun, something different. You're gonna go to a club every single night listening to the same music. This is no, it was great. Night. And music live that you know is great. It's the best. It's awesome. And then if you only have to pay $5 yeah. to go see it and it's actually good, it's, a, it's awesome. Yeah, I get it. I just am very confident that if one of these cover bands was making tens of millions of dollars, you would find bare minimum, maybe not the band, but it would bare be an minimum, issue. the record labels uh, would well, start. What would be the legal yeah. well, here, Here's the legal like legality of it is that these bands are allowed to perform any song they want under... Uh, in a venue because the venue has a uh, they buy like a a package from BMI or one of these like music things uh -huh. that says you can play any music in our venue but they can't sell that music and say yo this is a cover of so the so the publishers are making money off of it yeah they're selling uh, the rights to any song it's why like in a bar they can play any music they want yes. to a billion people who are paying money to get in that bar because if you want to go on the DJ thing like again I don't know exactly how this works but I imagine DJs either buy the music themselves or they're streaming it, and then the artist is getting paid either off the of purchase of the music or the stream. Mm. Yeah. And then they're also getting paid off of the venue that is licensing out the ability to play that music. Right. So the publishers are making sure they get theirs, and then the artists are going to get theirs. And at least they get a little off the cover bands. Mm. But it just seems yeah. kind of wild that you can go, exactly. I'm just going to make a living p playing other people's music yeah. and yeah. not pay them at all. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little crazy. Like, at least the DJ has to purchase the song. It's two dollars. Even if they they might stream it, like, and, or they at least get the stream right. every time they play it. Yeah, yeah. And at least the DJ is like kind of like feeding the artists as well, right? right. Like yeah. it could be a new artist. You're breaking them, but not the cover band. Yeah. yeah. The cover band is only satisfying like the biggest fans of the actual yes. band that can't see the band. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's kind of weird. You don't. You would never go see a cover band. I don't get it. You don't like music, also. I guess yeah. doesn't like music. <laughs> I don't think you like this type of music. Yeah, I don't. I stuff want to with the like, drum, like rap and stuff. It doesn't make sense. And rap live isn't usually great. Yeah. And I don't. I'm not fucking partying, so I'm just there. Like, yeah, I could be listening to this shit at home and peace. Okay, yeah, and that's, quiet. that's what it is. It's not the cover band thing. It's yeah. like yeah. Uh, music after nine. What is the point? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. come on. Aren't there noise ordinance <laughs> laws? I can't even hear myself think. No, it's so much fun. It, if there's music that you actually know. Like it's you it's, know the words too. Everyone knows it. It's fucking yeah, everybody's dope. singing along. Yeah, it's so it fun. It's karaoke, bro. Come on. The thing is that it's like it's the best of karaoke. Okay. And it's actually good. But also imagine there's instruments. So like yeah. you're hearing live music. It, mm -hmm. It's ah. But there's also special, karaoke. Man. Have you ever been a live band karaoke? Oh yeah, the best karaoke there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If the fun. people can sing. Obviously. If they can't sing, it gets a little rough. Excuse. Yeah. Okay. Um. President Biden finally doing something good. <laughs> let's go. Let's let's. What do we got, Mark? Break it down. Attitude of the great Negro at the time, pitcher in the Negro leagues, went on to become a great pitcher in the pros in the Major League Baseball after Jackie Robinson. His name was Satchel Paige. <sighs> You just kind of feel bad for him. What's more, yeah, it's like, what's more embarrassing? He doesn't want to do this. No. <laughs> like, he doesn't want to be here. He doesn't want to do this. He does, maybe he's, you know, dedicated his whole life to politics, but I'd like to believe that, like, at 80 years old, yeah. you start to go, like, who gives a fuck? Yeah, you like, dedicated your whole life to comedy. Like, at 80, do you want to be like, oh, I'm not going to see my kids because I got to be a comic every fucking yeah. day on the road? This like, guy's geez. a soldier. Every yo. day he shows Doug. up and has to be the president. Yo, I think we need to start talking about how, like, Biden. He Biden dedicated, is a man. real one. He's a patriot, bro. I feel bad for this For man. his party. For his party, he is yeah. a fucking real one. And he lived long enough to, like, be racist-ish, <laughs> be not racist, and then be racist again. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, like, racist, but, like, early in his career, he got some wild shit, you know? He's, yeah. I mean, early in his life, that was what you called him. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what he grew up with. That yeah. was the progressive term of the time. Yes, 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 yes. That is true. I mean, it is called the Negro League. Yeah. And this is unfortunate because he's not, 
really calling the guy a Negro. I think he's trying to he say the to great say Negro League the pitcher. The great Negro League pitcher, Satchel Paige. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But words are hard when you're 80. <laughs> Bro. It's so difficult. I know. To... <laughs> they're, they're keeping this guy up 17, 18 hours a day. Can't like... even remember his kids' names. You got to remember fucking Satchel Paige and yes. all his no. accolades. Yeah. Come on, bro. Yeah, I mean, he's declining. Like, we said this was going to happen. We yeah. were like, God, it ages you. Yeah. But when you're already aged, and now you're going through this. He's I mean, pulped, just, dude. He's fucking up there. His, Sawdust. On his podcast, <laughs> what do you think? Rogan mentioned that he's likely on Adderall. I'm sure they're not here. To him. Not, not, here. Here. not here. Not here. But, but they have to. Like, I mean, they got crazy cocktails. Like, they have crazy cocktails of things that you could consume to keep yourself up. I'm sure that he is getting the best of the best. And this is what it's doing to him. Without those cocktails, without Adderall, without these like other pharmaceuticals, I mean, I mean that guy was on something when he ran out on stage after he got elected, broke his fucking foot. His own body was like, "What's going on, yo? Yeah. <laughs> this is not what we're meant to do right now." Yeah, this poor guy, man. I feel bad. I feel bad, but I also feel bad for us because it's like this is the guy who's supposed to represent our country. Like, if another country had this guy as president, we would be destroying them. Right, yeah. right for the taking, bro. Lomachenko's over in fucking uh, Belarus, just like. Oof. Kidnapping people out of the sky. Is his like, name Lomachenko? I think so. Lu- That's the boxer, boxer, isn't it? Oh, Lukashenko. Loma- oh, I think it's Luka- Lukashenko. Lukashenko. I was yeah, about yeah. to be like, holy shit. Yeah, I, was, I didn't <laughs> know they elected that guy. That's, that's so, yeah, Manny Pacquiao. Did, eat your heart out. That guy's just over in Belarus. He literally just like kidnapping people from the sky. Like that journalist that was talking shit, the plane flies over and goes, no, nah, get down here. Mm. He's like, he works with a travel company in Belarus that's basically like bringing in like uh, wealthy like Iraqis that want to be in Europe. Okay. And then putting them like basically on the border as like an intimidation tactic to like the surrounding countries to be like, yo, we're going to like negotiate. And if the negotiation doesn't go well, all of a sudden you're going to have an immigration crisis in your country. Wow. <laughs> so you're just like using these poor people from the Middle East as like a bargaining chip. That's genius. That's really smart. <laughs> it's fucking insane. Because what they told him something, what they tell him, what, what, what? Europe criticized him for like the election fraud. Or oh something yeah. Like I mean, right? a ton of shit. They call him like the last dictator in Europe. So like he's going, wait a minute. I'm your shield for this Middle Eastern immigration problem, quote unquote, that you have. You expect me to keep these motherfuckers out of your country, mm-hmm. right? And you going to shit on me? You <laughs> yeah. like my tyrannical tactics when it comes to keeping people out of Europe. Yeah. You like the fact that I could just go fuck you and shoot every one of them motherfuckers that cross the border. You like me keeping y'all shit, quote unquote, safe. Yeah. And then you going to criticize how I'm here? Democrats can't do the shit, or what is it? Democracies can't do the shit that I do. Yep. You need a tyrant to keep people out of your country. Yeah. And the way that they keep them out of your country is they keep them out of our country. Yep. I'll let these motherfuckers in and funnel them right into Europe. You keep talking your shit. I like this. <laughs> I respect this man, yo. You're not going to use me for what I am and criticize me for the same thing. It is funny that he likes a dictator. And yeah, then you yeah. tell him dictatorial tactics yeah, and he's yeah. like, yeah. He gets fired up. Oh, yeah. I'm saying, like, Finally. I'm saying it's like, think Somebody about I it. Somebody I get behind. <laughs> so it's like this guy right here, I don't know. You don't think that's hypocritical? It's like all these people in Europe, all these European leaders, they know that they can't get away with these tactics because they're in these you know, democratically run uh, societies, right? Yeah. They know that they have to treat people like human beings. Mm-hmm. So what they do is they tell Gaddafi, they tell Lukashenko, they tell all these tyrants, hey, since you guys don't treat people like human beings, do us a favor. Handle the migration, uh, immigration crisis, would you? Make sure that people don't leave. And if they come into your country, you can shoot them, you can kill them, you can do whatever the fuck you want, and then we'll break you off with a little bread or do something like that. And then all of a sudden, he hears these whispers of these European leaders criticizing what he got to do to maintain their shit. And he's like, oh, no, we're not going to have this. Well, that's like China a little bit. We're like, man, we got to pay people right here. You know what I mean? But not over there. You guys pay them nothing so we can have cheap shit. And, Ex- then, we, and then we criticize their sweatshops. We're like, what are you doing to those people? Make I know. Stuff. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's uh, who the fuck is buying it? Yeah. And I bet you China looking at us like, I know they're not talking about us. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know they're not talking to us because every time we get in a trade deal, what do they ask for? Yeah. Cheaper labor. <laughs> yeah. why the, why the, I mean, it's unbelievable. Zero <laughs> accountability. Yeah. Right? I, I respect it. So he just scoops them all people. Talk your shit, fam. Puts them on the border and goes, yo. He Remember these them, people? He gives them like a crazy visa too. He's like, yo, you basically just become citizens. Like he just gives them like an insane visa situation. I love that. He's I goes, love that. You come in, you're tourists technically, but you're on like a tourist visa. What's life like in years. Belarus for citizens? That shit is foul or that shit is, it's all right. I don't know. Who knows? I've never been there. I'll tell you, he looks a lot more intimidating with his military cap on than bald as fuck. Yeah, that's facts. 
He looked like a dictator up top. Then that ball picture, that's just a guy on who's I guess mean, that's who. That's a great picture right there. That's a guess who character. Yeah, that that one right? right there? Yeah, it looks like Mike Piazza. Yeah. That guy's a legend. Yeah, that one. Yeah, this guy's pathetic. I'm not this listening guy's to him. This guy's on the, at all. the brink of death. got some mitts on him, though. Look at him. Why hands. don't we put cool hats on our presents? We need to. We need Biden to. could use a hat. Biden needs a hat. A hat, I think, would really help him. Even the aviators make him look cool. Yeah. When he's wearing the aviators, I'm like, all right, let's go. Yeah. Cover it. Do too much decorum, dude. It's just too much. We're we're such fucking cocks with all that shit. Remember Obama wore like a tan suit and people were like, how could he? How could he wear a tan suit? Look fly as fuck. That's a problem? Uh, bruh. He's black. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, we're changing the colors up were, here, baby. They were mad it wasn't purple. They're yeah, like, come like, on. Come on. Yeah, put yeah, that, fly that's on. super <laughs> chill out. Like, yeah. he should have a fucking puka shell necklace. The guy's from Hawaii, <laughs> right? He's wearing a tan suit so yeah. we can flex a little bit, and then the conservatives start freaking the fuck out. This is, I respect that. Don't call me a piece of shit so you can look good when you are invested in my piece of shitness. Yeah. I, I loved it when... Someone was saying, like, uh, Trump, how could you remember, like, uh, they're like, uh, Trump, how are you okay with them killing these foreign officials? I don't know if they were talking about Saudi Arabia. I don't know if talking about, like, Russia. And he just looked right at the reporter. He's like, the fuck you think we do? <laughs> we be killing these motherfuckers, too. It's your first time in America? Yeah. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Some shitty things got to happen for you to live this cushy-ass life. Yeah. So if you don't, so here's what it is. We just don't talk about it. I'm fine. Don't criticize Lukashenko for the yeah. shit that you are asking him to do. Yeah. And don't ask him or and don't question the fraudulence of his elections. Yeah. Just stay quiet on both matters. Yeah, okay. You gonna you gonna you gonna get dirty, then let me get dirty. If you, you involved in the dirt, yeah. It's like snitches, it's like I'm okay to tell the cops. Like I'm allowed to go tell the cops if somebody's bra- is uh, breaking the law. Yeah. Right? I'm not being a snitch because I'm not doing illegal shit. Right. It's just the people that are involved in the illegal activity that can't snitch because right. it's like, yo, we all in this. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You are in this. You are snitching. Whoever talking shit to Lukashenko, you are snitching. In fairness, you benefit from I don't it. think Biden's ever going to snitch. Biden's is Biden not snitching because nah, he, he doesn't remember though. what you told him. He, he don't know. He don't know nothing, bro. <laughs> He'd be a great person to confide in. <laughs> oh, God. This poor guy, man. Yeah. I'm starting to feel a little bit bad for him. Yeah. It is. And it's fucked up that we keep him out there. It's like elder that. abuse. It is abuse. It's elder abuse. It if this was happening in a retirement abuse. home where they're like, all right, 17 hours a day, come on, get your bike in, oh we're getting this shit God. going. The, the, the retirement home will get shut gran- down. Leave my grandpa alone, yeah. is what we would say, right? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. inhumane. Uh, it's inhumane. It is inhumane. Gama, nowhere to be found, this bitch. Yeah. yeah where, where are you she? at? What you doing? On purpose. They, what is it like? Anytime she opens her mouth, people hate her on both sides. Yeah. So they're like, we might need you to be president soon. Yeah. Let's just wait for you to be around for people to hate you because they don't have to keep you elected. You're the official for the next four years or the next two, whatever the fuck it is, no matter what. So, but there's no chance they run her again. Or they need them to hate her so much now so that they can start having a reason to put in someone new. Michelle Obama's coming in round two, guaranteed. Mm. No way. 2024, I don't think so. 2028, she might be, she might be in there. Michelle Obama's going to what? President. Run for president? She's going to run for president? Yeah. Obama don't want no more of that, bro. I think, yeah, I Honestly, think he's good. I'll be honest, though. I, I would want my girl to run for president. <laughs> Why? And then just nag her the same <laughs> way <laughs> that she was probably nagging him. You never spent time with us. Bitch, I'm blowing up brown people. The fuck you want me to do? You want me to be at dinner every single night? There's brown people that are trying to get married, and I need to blow them fuck up yeah. to save America and protect us. Yeah. <laughs> okay? These things need to get done. Yep. Someone needs to flip the switch on these motherfuckers. Yep. Yeah, that'd be great. You always want your wife to do what you got to do. That's yeah. a good point. So yeah. they know what's up. That's yeah, a one good time. Point. One time, four years, and yeah. then oh, it was four two, not enough. Oh, is that? I'm gonna force my girl to do stand up one time. Yeah, like, yeah. How was that? Yeah, you enjoyed that. Yeah, send her Bombing. on tour, dog. Send yeah. her on tour. I'm going to. Nah, tour, tour, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tour. They might like too much. Right? You can't, <laughs> can't have them enjoy the good parts of this shit. You know? No, 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 not the hustle. You. The hustle. No, no, on your own tour. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You go on your own tour. Yeah, you gotta. You, you go gotta, perform gotta, at fucking yuck yucks yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on a Tuesday. Yeah. See how that is. But yeah. No, nah, yeah, I feel bad for Biden. And then also, like, if you're going to pronounce the name of, like, the Negro League, like, you better get it. You got to get that perfect. Yeah, you got to really nail it. Yeah. It's like I, talking I, about the slut walk. Like, you can't slip up. I didn't like, even feel comfortable saying nag her. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know what I mean? Like, I I'm did. I'm going to give my girl a hard time. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm not going to say any other words. About nope. It. <laughs> I'm going to make it I'm difficult gonna, for them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Annoy her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. 100%. Yeah. 100%. I keep telling my girl, I'm like, yo, you got to work. 
You got to work. Mm. You got to work for a year minimum before we have kids. It's not like Britney Spears. Right now. You got to work. <laughs> this is work. a conservatorship. Got to work, bro. Oh, I thought even I, I was. <laughs> 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 Keep he paying these bills for the family. Nah, I mean, like, you got to work, man. Because, like, if you want to not work, I don't want, I want you to know what you're missing. Mm. Or you're lucky enough to not do. Yeah. Mm. Like, I want you to have that experience. Go try it all. I'm doing the same thing with my girl. I'm making her work in a coal mine. Make her work there. Yeah. yeah. I'm putting her in a coal mine. I'm going, yeah, this is what could be for you. Yeah. Yeah. If you were like a peasant in the 1800s, you might have yeah. to yeah. fucking straight coal out of the ground. Get that coal, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, there is, there is a, there's, there are women out there that resent their husbands after they have kids and that kind of shit because they're like, you know, I did, I could have, I could have been this. I Go see. Whatever. I want you to first see what it's like to do that. And if you love it, then keep doing it and we'll support it and we'll get help with the kids and all these other stuff. And if you hate it and you want to take care of kids and also do your other business on the side, et cetera, I'll support that as well. But I don't ever want to be the source of your resentment. No. Mm. Like I took something 100%. away from you. 100%. Yeah. I want to be your savior. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saved. Remember how awful that job was? <laughs> Remember when I saved you? Yeah. Remember I said you could just hang out all day and watch Netflix? Yeah. <laughs> as long as you push a child out of your body. Yeah. Just to watch the shit I'm on. Yeah, yeah. Just watch me. Yeah. 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 Anyway, okay. Uh, uh, anything else before we get you out of here? We want to talk hypocrisy at the uh, COP26 conference, that, which is the climate change conference. They set the record for CO2 emissions. Wow. Uh, citing air travel as the main culprit. Yeah, I mean, so, this shit is so stupid. In 2019, they didn't have as many emissions as they did in this one specifically. Y'all can't do this over Zoom. I know you <laughs> did it over Zoom during the pandemic. Just Zoom, man. What do you think going to happen when we meet up? Where was that little climate bitch? Was she there this year? Oh, Ooh. Greta? Outside. They cut, say what? They didn't invite her this year, huh? Uh, she, they, they didn't? She probably was annoying them about... I almost said an egg, too. Yeah. She was probably <laughs> annoying them about fucking, you guys, we should really work to reduce the CO2 emissions. Yeah. Hey, let's walk from meeting to meeting. Yeah. And they're like, throw yeah. that bitch out. Yeah. Dude, she, was, she was trying to sail, right? She would sail everywhere. She was like, I'm going to sail to America <laughs> in order to fucking whatever, whatever. That's the whitest shit. A Viking sailing to America. Yeah, <laughs> talking yeah, about yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, pollution. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, this is stupid ass shit, man. Shut up, little girl. <laughs> Just yeah. cut up the glaciers. Yeah, are you pissed you didn't get invited? Yeah. You should have gone. I should have gone to that shit. I literally like, could fix it. That's the Met Gala for politics. That's what it is. Yeah. You just go there, you fucking fly your private jet, you pretend you make a bunch of speeches about how you want to change things. Yeah. You ain't changing nothing. There's a few of these types of like charity events that they do that at. God, what was the other one? There's one in like Europe. The G20? No, it's not even political. They're like, it's for just rich oh, people. Davos. Dava, no, and there's another one. It's like a rich, like it's almost like a party, and they act like it's oh, let's raise money for charity or awareness. Amfar, for Amfar, yeah, that's it. That's it's the just, biggest. That's the biggest rich people hustle is the, let's spend four thousand dollars per plate for charity, yeah. and that money ain't going nowhere except next year's fundraiser. Yeah. Fucking yeah. just unbelievable. Guys, this has been an episode of Flagrant 2. Thank y'all so much for listening. We will see you on Patreon this Friday. Patreon.com slash Flagrant 2. Uh, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. And we'll see you soon.